And we are here for our third week in a row. We're doing another live video. You're in. Oh, so was I just talking to myself there? <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> Hello guys, welcome to our third live video. This week we're going to be talking about EMS cigars, what their significance is. We're going to be discussing some of the rumors, the myths and all that, you know, good stuff. I've got Ray who's joining us again. Just to be clear, by the way, Ray's not a guest. Ray's part of the channel now. Alex is part of the channel as well. A couple of people were mentioning that, and I thought, let me just be clear. It's part of the channel. We're the same channel. He's not a guest. But we will have guests coming over at some point. And uh, I think, Ray, you're going to be bringing in a few people as well. Yeah. Hopefully. Well, I think let's, let's let COVID and whatever calm down a bit, and then we can do something. But yeah, so in keeping with um, the Cuban theme... Smoking a Romeo and Julieta Churchill, the classic Churchill. Ray doesn't like these cigars, but that's cool. I didn't say I don't like them. <laughs> I say I prefer other Churchills than, than the Romeo Which one? And Which one? Straight away? Mm -hmm. uh, not need to be a Cuban, you know. I don't, I don't mind. Yeah. 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 Uh, Churchill. I like uh, Illusion, have a Churchill on one of. Uh, that's why I have a Churchill. You know, it's a lot of other brands have Churchill. But I don't have Churchill, which is not bad. What about what about uh, Cuban Churchill? Cuban Churchill, probably. What is the is Lusitania same Vitola? Looks like no, same Vitola, no? Lusitania it's is double, double Corona. Double Corona, yeah. It's similar, pretty much. It's just a slight half an inch longer than that. Probably. Mm, yeah, yeah but it's it's quite a bit bigger because it's thicker as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's a much bigger cigar. Yeah, yeah. I don't smoke many Cuban Churchills to be honest. No. Yeah. Fair enough. Well. Today, you show me what cigars you've got. Yeah, I'm smoking. No, 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 no. I don't want to know about them. I'm Do you know which cigar I'm talking I'm about? I'm smoking uh, Ezra Zion. Hold it in front of your face. Ezra Zion machine gun. No, which is a very, focus. very nice looking cigar. You didn't focus? Oh, yeah, the cannon. The cannon is very particular. It's very. It's going to focus there you go, there you go. just on his face. So that is a... Uh, Cigar which is made only in 500 pieces. What? Uh, Ezra oh. Zion is one of my favorite boutique brands. Uh, I pretty much smoke almost everything what they release. Um, Shout out to Ezra. What do you call it? Ezra, Ezra Zion. Zion. Shout out to it's Ezra Zion. Who is up with some free cigars, man? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it will be very really hard. All their cigars, all their cigars which are special production, production, it's limited up to 200, 300, 500 pieces. Wow. Five boxes, pieces. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's five hundred pieces. That's leaf. nothing. Yeah, five hundred pieces. The, nothing. That's the original release. Connecticut Broadleaf two years ago being released. The binders and the viewers usually a secret. They never release them. The tobacco made uh, seven eight years ago, so definitely aged tobacco. It's very strong cigar. I wouldn't recommend that for Usman. I don't why, I don't know why he wants to smoke as a Zion. Oh, not for me. You know, I was saying you know get some free in for you, make you happy, man. I'm thinking about you. But it's very very lovely cigar. And yeah, I start with stronger cigar usually recently, not recently, but a few, <clears throat> a few years ago, maybe I start, I prefer to start with the strongest cigar and then I'm carry on with the lightest one. So my next one will be Cuban probably. We'll see how I'm Show sure them which Cuban. Oh, you want to keep that as a surprise? It's a, yeah, it's nothing. Wow. It's a Cuban cigar. Oh, it's nothing. Wow. Huh? <laughs> okay. Fair enough. <laughs> what are we doing? That one? Lighter. Oh, you need lighter. So yeah. You say it then, man. People know that you're here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alex was asking for a light and he's like Ugh, doing all this bullshit yeah that, that wasn't how I did it that, that wouldn't help that's how, I <laughs> that's how I imagined it okay so subject at hand EMS cigars I mean no what's happened no you can carry on oh what's going on no that's fine it's okay. uh, yeah well, I was I was thinking we need to you need to start with something else first. Well, but I forgot what. Yeah. Um, there's a bit of a change to the podcast this week. A bit of an exciting development for us. Go on. Well, you secured it, mate. Huh? Who are we getting credit from? Oh. <laughs> I am so sorry, sorry guys. I am so sorry. Oh, by the way, this video has been sponsored by Monte Fortuna Cigars. Monte Fortuna Cigars is a European company. They uh, ship worldwide, and um, 
Yeah, I mean, when you go onto their website, they've got a ton of different cigars available. They've got Cubans available. They've got new old cigars available. So you've got a huge selection and their service is excellent. So I highly recommend them. I bought a bunch from them as well. It's, it's a company that I think does a fantastic job. So I'll leave a link below. Uh, check out the website. And uh, yeah, Monte Fortuna Cigars, thank you very much for sponsoring our video. Thank you for reminding me. That was a... <laughs> Great sponsor read there. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, honestly, Monte Fortune is great. Uh, I've been buying from them uh, for a while. I think, to be fair, I think people in the cigar industry now know about them. It's not even like, oh, who are these guys? They're, they're fairly well known now. Um, but yeah, you know, they're, they're a great company to work with. They're a great company to, to buy cigars from as well. So, <clears throat> which is actually on theme, by the way, because Monte Fortune, they're based in Europe. EMS cigars are predominantly about English market. Well, they are not predominantly. They specifically about English market selection cigars. So there's a lot of myths, man. I mean, what do you know about EMS cigars? Before that, let me ask you a question, which is not really on the topic and uh, what we're going to talk about. Why do you first light the cigar and then cut it? Yeah. There's a question in the chat. That's why I'm asking you. Oh, there's a question in the chat. Yes. There's no real reason. There's no like. I'm, it's not like I'm trying to. It's more of a habit, I think. It's just, just the way that I've been doing it since I kind of started smoking cigars. Whenever I used to light my cigars, I don't know, it just it's just one of them habit things. It's not anything. I've heard people say stuff like if you light your cigars before you cut it, then uh, the first section you don't get that charred flavor or whatever. When I've tried it, I haven't found much of a difference in all fairness. Uh, but <clears throat> it's just one of those things that I've done. I always tend to light my cigar before I cut it. I'm I tried that. I tried that a few times. Never been uh, find the difference. So recently I tried to light the cigar properly before I put it in my mouth. Not with the lighter, which is a harder way. You know, you need to use a stick so, mm, or mm. cedar stuff and cedar pieces, and it take you about. Two three minutes literally to light the cigar. Soft flame light the same thing. Takes yeah. a while. Takes but a while. I found it interesting. I found it way better for the burn of the cigar. Mm. If you you know if you not overburn because a lot of people do a mistake to overburn some of the sides and then yeah going ugly for the next couple of inches mm. and so. But yeah, if it's a decent cigar, you can see that the cut line it's decent. So carry on with the EMS. Let me just to go back into the uh, you know the burn or whatever. I think you know what it might be a good idea for us to have a a full-on video discussing how to lighten you know how to like cut and or different preferences in terms of cutting lighting and cigars and accessories and all that kind of stuff because there's such a huge it's, it's such a huge subject there's so many different ways so many different things that people do and it's, it's a, a huge but also there's a a lot of videos and uh, a lot of channels literally do that kind of stuff you know when you know how to cut the cigar how to light the cigar why you cut it and stuff we might do that you know as a part of, uh, of just if, bite the cigar man you'll be fine yeah if, the, if, <laughs> if there's a lot of requests i might show them uh, uh the behike ritual oh god you know, what is the behike ritual basically it's uh, how you're supposed to light the, the original... cigar how you're supposed to cut yeah how does the behike the, be the uh, actual behike not yeah, the, the behike cigar behike, yeah yeah the just, just behike clear. people uh, light the cigar and you know cut and light and you know present uh, even the cup of the cigar like a trophy and stuff but yeah if, if people have requests on that we might film a short video or anything like that so it's i'm okay with that so ems cigars <clears throat> what do you know about them ems so a lot of people first of all let's say let's start with that a lot of people do the mistake to think the ems meaning now is the same as what ems meaning in the beginning mm. so there's a there's a nothing comparable just the same name you know it it, it will be the same if you say that uh, you know the Romeo and Juliet, uh, Romeo and Juliet Cuban is the same as the Romeo and Juliet uh, Honduras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing. So complete different cigars, different, different, and the same name but different stuff. The EMS uh, basically how it start start with AMS, which is AMS. Uh, it's been mean uh, American market uh, selection, and that's been uh, many many years ago in Cuba, way before the Cuban Revolution, when still the Americans dictate the market and stuff in Cuba. Um, the usually AMS have a standard of the cigars they buy and they choose and that's been uh, related to the color of the cigars 
and the color of the wrapper. Yeah. So if you know the the usually the Cuban colors of the wrapper, mostly in the new world as well. But there's a six or seven different types of wrapper. You know, there's a double claro, which is a candela, more known as a candela. There's a claro. There's a Colorado Claro, which is the most well-known Cuban cigars at the moment, a Colorado Claro. They have a Colorado, they have Maduro, and they have Oscuro. Mm. So that's all the different colors of the wrapper. So many, many years ago, when the Americans uh, choosing the cigars in, in Cuba, they usually choose the Candela, which has been massively boom uh, in America in the 40s, in the 50s, then been slowed down because obviously Americans can't, can't buy Cuban cigars after that legit. But there was another boom probably around 70s and 80s when the New World cigars start making cigars and a lot of brands start making Candela as well. But the American AMS or the American market standard is basically Candela wrapped cigar. The second standard, which has been uh, uh, mean EMS and what we're going to talk about later mm. more in depth, uh, the EMS is English market standard. English market standard, basically it's uh, cigars which are Colorado Claro which is the, the same color as your cigar at the moment. Uh, that is uh, usually Colorado Claro type of, of, uh, of uh, color. And uh, there was a one more uh, standard, which is called SMS, and uh, which is being related to the Spanish market. So Spanish market selection. And usually the Spanish market selection, that was the darkest cigars. Usually Maduro. Not many Oscuros in Cuba, but they, they, they have some some examples in the past mm. so that being the three standards ams ems and sms and the uh, ams being nothing related to the uh, quality of the cigar or anything like that. it just being a type of color of the cigars which been predominantly sell in uk that's precisely what um hunters and franco confirmed as well so i, I say confirmed they didn't confirm it so when i was speaking to jimmy what he mentioned was that we don't know all the details but apparently around that time, pre the current EMS standard, the difference was that the US had a particular preference for wrapper colors and the UK had a particular preference for wrapper colors. So that was essentially the difference. They would separate and the Spanish them. market as well. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't mention the Spanish market. He didn't but that mention it, but that's yeah. the biggest market. Yeah, yeah, of course <laughs> it is. Yeah, so. it's huge. Um, but he just mentioned that that's the major difference between EMS and AMS. However... Today, <clears throat> when we talk about EMS cigars, there are a lot of myths going around English market selection cigars. A lot of it talking about quality and how English market cigars are better. So one of the myths is that EMS cigars or Hunters of Franco have this special relationship with Cuba. And because of this special relationship, they have access to particular stock or first access to stock or they can, you know, review cigars and look at cigars of what they want from Cuba and then select which ones they want to import in. Now, well, let's just... First how would you all, even manage that? First of all, let's tell and explain probably what the EMS meaning now. Because as I mentioned in the beginning, EMS is nothing comparable to what, what was been in 1960s, 70s, uh, 80s, even before the 90s, 40s, 50s. Yeah. So the, the EMS, basically the meaning of EMS been, uh, become different probably around the early 90s. Mm. When uh, uh, basically two people... Because uh, it's been about 25 years now since the current standard has been in Yeah, the, the early 90s, Edward Sahakian, the guy mm. who owned David of Shop in London, and uh, Nicholas Freeman... That was the guy which been more than 25 years the managing director of Hunters and Franco. Yeah, yeah. They on a, on a chat, they, they, they looking for something which uh, uh, basically will make the Cuban cigars, uh, um, prove the cig Cuban cigars are legit and not fake. Mm. So they, they come with the idea, all the Cuban cigars specially uh, made uh, for the UK market, you know, specially sell for sale in UK market. Uh, they will have some kind of... Uh, abbreviation stamp or sticker or whatever so that's why they just they come with the idea uh, ems to become a actually english market standard as a quality and not a quality more of a legitimate stuff so if you if the cigar box is ems uh, stamped or sticker it's supposed to be legit mm. it's supposed to be uh, distributed by hunters and franco which is the importer in uh, in uk yeah and uh, guarantee that cigars are 100% uh, authentic 
no fakes, uh, no scrapes, no, you know, kind of uh, silly stuff. And uh, yeah, that, I believe that become an idea around 1991. The first stamps becoming from 1992. But there was a few examples before that, which mm. is not an official ones. The official, yeah. I think the first official is 1992. So there was, a, as, in, as probably many of you know, every year the stamp become different color. Yeah, different color. Different so band. they want different color just to be able, when you see the stamp, you know where that uh, stamp being put on the box and, you know, just realize how old is the is the quality control on the cigars and stuff like that. So, yeah, that, that's what the EMS is supposed to mean. Nothing with the quality. It's basically the, the idea to be legit cigars. Mm. So, the quality-wise... Well, I asked, um, I, I asked a bunch of people, just regular people, and I've been asking this question to a lot of people over, like, the last few years. Just meeting people. It's, not, it's mostly anecdotal, to be honest. This is just, like, um, thoughts of people in the public and whatever. So... This isn't representative by any means, but one thing that remained consistent was that a, a, a large number of people tended to believe some of the rumours. And one of the most classic rumours is that EMS cigars are better cigars. They're better quality cigars. They will taste better. They have this you know, better profile and everything as well. And then when you ask the question, well, how? And they say, well, Hunters of Franco, they have a great relationship with uh, Cuba and they're able to select particular cigars. Now... If you ask UK retailers the same question, what's the value of EMS cigars? Nine times out of ten, in fact, every retailer I spoke to, they all said to me, listen man, go speak to Hunters and Franco. That's basically the universal response. They're like, look, that's got, not, it's got nothing to do with us. That's a Hunters and Franco issue and you should speak directly to them. Which I did, and I'm going to get to that. And then I spoke to um, European retailers. And European retailers were very blunt about it. They're like, what are you on about? There's obviously no difference. There can't be any difference. It's all coming from one country. How would you even determine which is better quality? And that's a good, that's, that's a very obvious point. Like when you have a large number of boxes of cigars, how would you even tell which one's better? Because they don't draw test them. Box cuts. But how would you, <laughs> no, no, but how would you know that the cigar is going to taste better? Well, until you smoke it. Taste, they're not supposed to be different. I'm talking about more about the quality as it relates to a draw and uh, but they don't draw stuff. test them, so they don't they wouldn't even know. Yeah, but as I mentioned in the last show, some Cuban factories used to have better history in making a better cigars than other factories. Mm -hmm. So if you know the factory codes, you know that if some good factory made the good cigars, you yep. you choose them. But I don't think as well if you're a big bigger importer, which you imported tons of cigars, you know, hundreds of thousands of boxes. You're gonna go and pick every single box out of the. It's a logistical or nightmare. Like yes, it's a complete. There's no so, feasible way to do that. I reckon some of the rumors which people put that the EMS are better quality and stuff, it's because they probably smoke fakes. It could what do you be. Mean? Do you mean that they smoke fakes and then they smoke EMS and yes. they're like, oh, EMS is better. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the my 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 idea why because you know if you smoke a let's say decent fake cigar. You know, there's a really good copies, really good, uh, you know, fake cigars, which look like the real ones. If you smoke that one and then you smoke a legit one, probably you'll find a difference. Mm. It's supposed to be a different. And you'll see, you realize, all right, that box is from Hunters and Franco. It's have an EMS stamp. It's way better than what I bought from Spain. And that's probably coming as a rumor, you know, if a lot of people start talking about it. Yeah. And then, oh, EMS is better standard. Probably more expensive, but better standard. Yeah. Which is not true. You know, no. it's uh, EMS never been a uh, stamp for the quality. No, it's been it has stamp been. for authenticity. authenticity. Yeah, authenticity, exactly. It's, 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 it's a safeguard. It's an extra layer of security for... And this is something that you can get directly from the website. Because if you go onto the EMS website, there's no mention of quality when it comes to like what access they have to Cuba. Because and when I spoke to Jimmy from uh, Hunters and Franco, when I asked that question, he was like, come on, man, how would you even do that? And obviously I'm asking the question based on what the rumors are out there, but he was very blunt about it in a nice way. He was very blunt about it. He said, look, how would we even do that? What, what someone's gonna be there and pick out the boxes? It's just not something which is feasibly possible. It isn't possible at all. You, I mean, Cuba, Cuba tends to ship cigars out on an ad hoc basis in essence, right? When they, they produce it, they just send them out. 
they just got to get them out because they need to, they, they've got a limited number of supply. They're a small country, they can only grow a certain amount per year. Whatever they can grow, they need to sell. It's a massive part of their big GDP. Amount. It's a big part of their GDP. I think it's like 15%. More than that, I believe. Last That was last time I checked. I don't know okay, if it's recent. I don't know if that's recent, though. I don't know if that's recent, though. So I could be wrong. But last time I checked, it was 15% of their GDP. That is huge. Contrast that to Nicaragua. And Nicaragua's cigar export, their GDP, the, the cigar GDP is only about um, 5%. 5% is still huge for one product. Yeah, but is that how... When was the last time when you checked it's a 5%? I believe uh, it's more than that. I spoke to the junior ambassador. Okay, the Ricardo. Yeah, Ricardo. Okay. So he yeah, said it's 5%. But Nicaragua is one of the biggest producers of coffee. Yeah. Uh, sugar, molasses and stuff. Yeah, so they've is, got uh, other products which are far larger. Yeah, so they've got, they've, got, they've got a little bit more diversity in terms of the, the products they've got. They've got a diverse selection. They're not kind of anchored down so massively by one product. But then again, 5% is still huge. But with Cuba, 15%. That's a big amount. So... Even you... Nicar Nicaraguan 5% is probably three times or four times the 15% of Cuba. You know, Cuba make 15%, if that's true, Cuba make 120 million cigars a year. I can name you three factories in Nicaragua, in total they make almost 50% more than that. Holy crap. <laughs> Only three factories. <laughs> wow. So Drew Estate, roughly 50 million cigars a year. Wow, that's incredible. Hoya de Nicaragua, roughly 20. Uh, Aganosa Leaf, mm. probably 50 million again. That's 120. Three factories. Holy crap. I'm not going to talk about Perdomo. I know. There are Drew, so many more. <laughs> so we mentioned with it, Perdomo, Placencia. Mm. Padron, Padron is about 9 million, 10 million. So it's not that much. So we have three big factories, which Placencia make, is pretty big though. Placencia is big. I have no idea how many they produce. They're pretty uh, big. But they, they produce a lot. Yeah. So that's a, another three factory, which you can see they produce a lot of cigars. Yes. Uh, who else is in Nicaragua? Um, AJ Fernandez. Davidov? They have very small amount in Nicaragua. I don't think they have factory in Nicaragua, actually. They no, have in Dominican, Dominican, Dominican Honduras. Yeah. But They're more Dominican. AJ Fernandez, he made 50 lines of cigars. Mm. He makes cigars for another 20 people, probably. So AJ Fernandez big probably factories. make 40 million cigars a year as well. Cuba, I mean, the, the production out of Cuba is not the biggest. It's not the biggest by, by, by any means. It, Cuban cigars may be extremely popular around the world. And they, they continue to be extremely popular around the world. But they're not the biggest producer. But in terms of what they produce relative to their GDP, it's huge. It's huge. So it wouldn't make sense to have any like fumbling around this product and that product and all that. It's just this is what there's always be a rumors. They yeah. always will be. You know. So I've I've heard people saying, "Oh, I'm going to the factory." You know, distributors from different countries which say, "Oh, I'm going to the factory. I pick my boxes and stuff." It's not true. You know, every Cuba have distributors in, for every country. You can't just go into the factory and pick 500 boxes. Mm. You know, you might make a special order. I've heard rumors of people making a special order, special boxes like, like some cabinets of 100 cigars specially made for them. You know, Michael Jordan cigars were always specially yeah, custom yeah, made. Yeah. What's so the Michael Jordan they, cigar called again? MJ23. Uh, that's the one. MJ23. Huge, huge 11, cigar. 11 inch Lancero. Huge, huge cigar. Just a ridiculous cigar. Even when he's holding it, it looks normal. Yeah, it looks like a toothpick. And if someone, <laughs> some, something off topic, if someone tells you that he can sell MJ23 cigar, it's not legit. I can guarantee that. Because only if you MJ get it from MJ himself. I made only for him. Yeah. They not made them exclusively for any shop. If you buy any of that like them, any of that size cigars, it's been made by some other roller, which is not legit. Maybe it's a good roller. It can do good quality cigars, but that's not a real MJ23. The only way you're going to know it's a legit MJ23 is if M MJ himself gave it to you. Yeah. Or probably, <laughs> you know, if you know a cousin, which uh, have a sister working into the factory. I don't know, man. You know. <laughs> Even then, that seems pretty sketchy. Yeah. You know, they're probably on the beach in Cuba somewhere. You can find some MJ23s. Yeah, of course you can. You can you, find the hikas there. <laughs> I don't think you can because people, it's not easy to roll that cigar. Difficult roll. What is, it's yeah, 11 inches. inches on zero. 38. Yeah. 38. <sighs> The whole way through, no plugs, no scrape floors. Oh. And it's not easy. People struggling rolling seven inch one which is a standard size. Imagine yeah. one and a half size of that. 
And it's tough to make a Lancero. That I think it's really... 11. Let me say. I think it's around 11 or 12. I've heard 11. Project. I've heard 11. When I saw a picture of it, it looked about 11. But then he was holding it, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you should have a big hands. I mean, there, there are a lot of... Um, um, one of the things that I've noticed is... Um, I was speaking to... So, I can't name this source. But I was speaking to this person who obviously has a lot of information about... Um, Cuban cigars in the UK, Cuban cigars from Europe. And I know for a fact, I've verified this person. In fact, I don't even need to verify him. The person knows what they're talking about. He's one of them people that, okay, you're like, yeah, you're in the position to be able to talk about this. And he was mentioning what EMS actually means and how and what the differences are and why there are perceived differences. And one of the things that he mentioned is that quality control is potentially better in the UK. Now, he didn't mention it, he didn't say that as a certainty. And, but then he also said that that doesn't mean it's perfect. That doesn't mean it's perfect because there are issues with cigars coming out from Hunters and Franco. He didn't want to go into the details about what kind of issues. So I said, okay, fine. But he said, potentially, quality is better coming out of Hunters and Franco. And I said, well, explain. So he goes, well, every single cigar box that you buy in the UK they are all opened. They are all inspected. So if there are any boxes that have um, a distinct amount of mold or if there's like, you know, if you open up a box and they've been damaged or whatever, this and that, they can be caught early and they won't go into circulation. That's the only difference, really. But in Europe, they don't necessarily have that. So there's a small chance. And he, he, he basically, he, he made sure to kind of um, stress the point and that is it's a small chance it's not a significant chance by any means because most retailers most importers they're obviously going to take care of the product they're not exactly cheap are they cigars they're, they're a premium product so they're going to look after them but there's a small chance that some cigar boxes may slip the net so potentially quality control is better in the UK because every cigar box as soon as it arrives in the Hunters of Franco uh, headquarters, they're cut open, they inspect it, um, and then they put the stickers and the stamps and everything on the EMS whatever logo, and then they send them out to the uh, to the retailers. So that's the potentially the only difference. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's it's it makes sense, you know, especially the prices in UK are slightly more expensive than the other European countries. Slightly. Well, it's the bigger tax, but there's a countries which the Cubans are more expensive than UK. So we're not the most expensive market. Finland is one of the most expensive. Finland, uh, Canada, Australia. Canada's not more expensive. I think it's more expensive. No, Canada's they less expensive. They raised expen the taxes now. Did they? Yeah. Mm. Australia, New Zealand. Are they? <laughs> they're one cigar here, if it's 20 pounds, probably in Australia, is 10 pounds more. Really? Yeah. They want to literally the, to kill the cigar smokers there. Really? They want to kill the cigar smoking. They want to kill there. the industry. Yeah. So, yeah, you, and you know how hard it is to import stuff into the islands down there. You basically, everything needs to be checked for any bugs, animals, and all kind of uh, stuff which they can kill their, their, you know, fauna and flora and, you know, kind of... Uh, yeah, they're very particular about the, uh, uh, the environment, which is great. And I agree with that to some extent, but then... If you're just doing it out of maliciousness, then you're just taking it too far, aren't you? Yeah. But, uh, but quality, uh, quality in terms of, so there's a difference. So there's a particular, there's an idea of quality when it comes to quality control. That you can have some access to because cigars in the UK, every single box is open before it goes into circulation. So you could argue that quality control is better in the UK. Some would argue that the value of cigars goes down if you crack open a box. Some would say, well, it doesn't really matter as long as it's got the EMS stamp on. It is kind of, you know... It's val value going down in what relation if you collect the cigars. Yeah. But a lot of people... There's another rumors that if you... It's a myth more, not rumors. If you buy EMS cigar, it's more collectible than other. It's not true. Why you collect EMS cigar boxes? Because of the stamp? Yeah, maybe if you like the stamp, you might... Mm. You might want to have a every single if you massive fan of a one you want the years. cigar. Yes. You want to have the years. Only in that way I can understand collectible. But you stamps. can but the year stamps are on the back of the box anyway. 
Yeah, but some people like, you know, to have every single different color EMS stamp oh, on the same, on the same yes. cigar. So that let's is, say that you is... smoke in Churchill's and you want Churchill with, from 1991 up to 2012. You want all the colors. You want all the colors and different stamps to be in your collection. Maybe in that way it will be collectible, but not, not in other way. You know, no. I, I don't see the point to collect EMS boxes uh, just because they're EMS. You know, it's... But I can see how people would do that. Yeah, I can mm. see... The only way to collect them is if you're a massive fan of some brand, some Vitola, it doesn't matter, Cohiba, Romeo and Juliet, uh, Monte, whatever. If you're a massive fan, you might have, will, will want to have fancy looking boxes. But as I say, I'm not a big fan of the cigar collectors which don't smoke their cigars. <laughs> I don't like that. Cigars are for smoking. Please smoke them and, you know, share with people, smoke them. This, this is the thing that Ray is going to be pitching to every single one and every single episode. Smoke your cigars, for God's sakes. Stop leaving them in the box to, you know... Do what, I don't know, what, what do people do? Just leave them there. I'd, yeah, because I'd smoke that, the hell out of them. That's a cigar collector's. I like to have a little difference. I'm a cigar collector, but I'm a cigar smoker. Most of the people collecting cigars, they don't smoke cigars. You know, they smoke, you know, they're not, that's a little bit hyperbolic, you know. I know a guy, I don't want to mention the guy, it's, I'm going to ruin his YouTube channel, uh, his uh, Instagram channel. Please the guy don't. have, <laughs> the guy have, Around 15,000 followers in Instagram. It's a decent. Okay, I think I know who you're talking about. The guy have every picture. It's probably, Usman is a photographer, Alex is a photographer. They know, they probably, if they need to make that kind of pictures, they're going to spend 10, 15 minutes preparing the picture, lights and the camera and settings. So the guy do the same thing. Yeah. He spent hours making one picture. Put it in Instagram. Yeah, he have like 10,000 likes and stuff. Once, I know the guy personally, so I call him and say, uh, we've not seen you for a while because of the COVID, let's have an online chat, mm. you know, in some platform, doesn't matter. I want to see you, I want to catch up with you, see how you're doing, talk about stuff about cigars. And he told me, I don't have cigars for smoking. I say, what? What? How you don't have cigars for smoking? I've seen pictures every day on a, uh, on a uh, Reserva cigars, on a Behike, on a Talismans, you know, all kind of expense. You say all that cigars are making the pictures, they're full boxes. So I take the cigar out of the box, make a picture, put it back. I have a humidor with seven, eight hundred cigars and I use them only for pictures. Just the variety, you know, let's say I make a five, some, some day I decide to have five decent reservas, some day I'll put two big cakes and stuff. So he's, he make the pictures and put the cigars back. And I say, you don't have any other... He say, I usually smoke uh, Partagas uh, D4 or, or Short Churchills, but I don't have any of them at the moment, so I can't smoke any of the other because I'm going to break the box. How silly is that? I kind of get it. Why? I kind of get it, but I wouldn't do that. Why? No, no, I'm saying... Because I... if, you're gonna, if you break the box... Well, you're going to lose value. I don't none, know. none of those collectors I know, they sell their cigars. Hmm. So what's the matter of the value? So who, so who are they keeping it for? What's the, they keeping it because they want to show up with them. So oh, I, have, I see. I have a full box of Behike. That means I have 2K in their cigars. Okay. If you smoke half of the box, you're not going to have 2K, but you enjoy amazing cigar. Hmm. Yeah, you pay... A lot of money for that cigar. So it's more of like a decorative piece in essence. Exactly. Like, okay. That's what I, what I call cigar collectors. So Do you know what? I don't mind every that. Every collector, I'm collecting different stuff, you know. Mm. Um, I'm collecting cufflinks, Thai stuff. And I just look at it. I say I have a lot of cufflinks which I haven't taken out for the box. But I like them. They're part of my collection. I never show them to anyone. I just like to see it, to look at them. But same with the cigars. A lot of people collect cigars. Mm. They don't smoke them. They keep them in the boxes. I also like to collect the cigars. But I smoke. You know me, I don't have cigars which I wouldn't smoke. So Every cigar is for smoking. So these collectors, do they prefer open box or closed box? Or what's, what's the verdict on that? Some people prefer sealed boxes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know people which have sealed boxes. So how do they even know what they've got in there? They don't know. <laughs> I bought, I bought how, do you, a, how do you check for like I bought, mold or whatever? I bought, they don't check. They relate on their measurement tools. You know, like humi proper humidors and rooms of uh, ceiling. But rooms. you just don't know. You don't know, I bought a box from a collector. Same you don't know if he's got box. beetles in there. I opened the box and only three cigars have been live because being full with beetles. Oh. Yeah, I bought a box a few months, few years, no, not a year ago. It was less than a year ago, a few months ago. A uh, Robina box. I bought it from a collector, which I know, and I know. Which Robina? Hmm? Which Robina? Uh, Unicos, I think, the torpedo oh, one. Nice, yeah. Yeah. 
So I'm, I'm a big fan of Robina. Yeah, so same like, here. Love I them. found it, you know, they stopped producing them years ago. So the box was uh, 2004, I believe. They still produce I didn't unicorns, pay right? a lot. They not produce most of the Robinas. Really? Yeah. That's the next brand which was ex extinct. Please. The, the Robina will extinct in two or three years. I can, I'm going to message Damien and tell him not to do it. <laughs> it's not about them. No, I know. I can tell the story about the Robina later. We'll why why they're yeah. going to extinct and why We'll discuss that later on in this video, I think. Yeah. yeah. So I bought a box of Unicos, sealed box, all the stamps, legit, all the codes and stuff like that. I opened the box, of course, I'm not going to keep it sealed. Open the box and literally every single cigar have five holes in, the, in there. When I emptied the cigars, it was a box of 25. When I emptied the dust box, dust coming out. I have like half an inch covered with uh, pieces of tobacco on the bottom, Ooh. like a bed of tobacco. Yeah, 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 yeah. And only three cigars don't have the holes. That's it. So I can't. If it's a, if it's a one hole on the cigar, you might save it. That you can, yeah, you can yeah. smoke it. You can keep the hole, uh, you know, sealed. You can smoke. Just, but put, a, just, just move the band down. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you have five holes on every side. No, and every, no it's like Swiss cheese, you know. And this, that's from a collector which keep the cigar sealed. So mm. yeah, that's one reason. It's to, I've seen many, many boxes on the auctions which are sealed with the paper. Even the old Cuban box have the paper on the top. The full paper, you know, like rice paper, you know, the white rice paper. So all the boxes have that on the top. And I, I, I can't imagine to buy, spend like thousands of pounds for some very collectible box. And you, you don't even it. see what they are. Yeah, that's why many people also don't open the boxes if they buy them. They are afraid <laughs> to see what is inside. So on that basis, I think the idea that closed box cigars have more value, mm, I'd, be, I'd be more afraid. I'd be more afraid to buy closed box cigars. But so... That probably next week on the other uh, show uh, we will talk about aging cigars. Mm. So if the box is sealed, they're better aging like that. Do they age better like that? Yes, because you know, intact the air, you know, move the air in the cigar box, and that's very important for the. But you could cigars. do that even without like, you could do that every open every time you open the box. Yeah, you slow or stop the process of uh, aging. A lot of collectors, when they bought a box, they put it in a sealed bag and then put it in the humidor. But you want to be able to check at least the first time if you purchased an old box of cigars already. You, some people do. Yeah, a lot of people do it. But a lot of people don't as well. Mm. It's, it's a fact. You want to tell you the Robina story? Go on. Well, and then we'll carry on with the subject. Go on. I would say that's uh, not confirmed from anyone. I have it from a conversation with a few people. Basically, after, you know, Don Alejandro Rubina, uh, one of the biggest grandmasters of the cigar industry, mm. the guy who made the, the best rapper probably worldwide, the, you know, the classic uh, Cuban rapper yeah. in his farm. Uh, when the Cuba took the, you know, the, the decide they going to be rule the cabanos and stuff like that, you know, the, to, rule, to make the rules and stuff, they told Don Alejandro, they need to, he need to use a new hybrid tobacco, which is not the old Cuban seed tobacco, because the old Cuban seed tobacco have a lot of problems with mold and insects and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, Cuban uh, Cuba have an institute of tobacco, which basically the only job to that institute is to make new hybrids, mm. which is uh, more uh, more better chance to survive on a mold, on a bad conditions, on a pesticides and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, when they took the the the, the basically the, the Habanos and stuff, they told Don, uh, Don Alejandro, you need to use our new tobacco. We, you're not using your seeds, your old own seeds. So he decided, he declined? No, you, he can't decline. It's mm. a Cuban govern, uh, government. Yeah, yeah. So he said, if I, if I do that for myself, I'm not going to use that seed. But he started using it anyway. And uh, they, they respect him for the, the, the knowledge and the, what you do for the industry and, you know, everything. Since he passed away, they start uh, slightly tried to basically take the farm from his grandson. Grandson mm. is called Hiroshi Robina. He ruled the farm at the moment. He's the guy who could blend the cigars and stuff. But he also makes cigars in Honduras. He has cigars called HR. It's very strong cigars. HR 80, it's similar brand to Robina with slight H on the front. Different Vitolas, different taste. You know, it's very strong. One of the very strong cigars I've smoked are HR as well. So they don't like that. Cuba mm. don't like it. Of course, he's a Cuban, but he makes cigars in another country. 
Of course. Of yeah. his farm in Cuba, you know. So there's, there's a conflict of interest there, isn't there? In some point, <coughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, they try to basically do everything possible to stop him making cigars. But uh, they can't just delete the whole brand Robina because, you know... All it's the a people, very popular yeah. brand. And they start, I like Robina. They start stopping every year some Vitola. So at the moment they produce only one Vitola, I believe. No, they got the familiaris. They produce Unicos. Think, current production is only one Vitola, I believe. Famosos. They stopped them. Oh, most of them they stopped in the last few years. Have they? Mm -hmm. Have Gavlo, they? Gavlo is reckon they still make Unicos and Famosos. Yeah. I need to double check, but I think they stopped. Well, we and could... Because I got... Um, like... 2020 box no sorry 2019 box they decline in the production there and okay. the rumors say um the last few cuban festivals they didn't invite uh, robina on the festival so the robina go on the festival the last year they didn't invite one of the biggest brands one of the most popular brands from Habanos. yeah and the last time on the festival <laughs> robina go to the festival with a personal invitation and personal uh, stuff on uh, lawrence uh, davis from salter Wow. He invite him with his uh, invitation. That's quite nice of him. Yeah, because he he is a pronounced Cuban smoker. He loves Cuban cigars, and he knows who is Robina. Okay. I believe he knows. What, who how is... many does he smoke? He smokes one every hour, right? He smoked some days in twenty cigars, probably. But that guy invite Robina to the Cuban festival. It's quite nice of him. Yeah, but why the government didn't invite it? And know. the rumors say they want basically just so they, they to cut the Robina from the from the whole industry. That's a shame. It's, it's, the same, it's not it. confirmed rumors. I, I've, I have a decent sources for that. Mm. But why they stopped Don Alejandro? The best Robina cigar. The fantastic cigars, man. The, the double Corona, right? Yeah. Um, they're, they're not even on, uh, yeah, some of the UK retailers. Can't find them. We'll smoke some of them. I have box. Have full, you got some? Full box. I bought. I bought like. Uh, I bought a bunch of them. No, it's not a full box. I open them and smoke too. Of course, it's not a full box. It's <laughs> yeah, in yeah, my yeah. collection. I don't, I, don't, I don't keep full boxes, but uh, my box is two thousand and four. Real? No way. Yeah. Who? One of the first boxes produced. Not first. They start nineteen ninety seven, if I'm not mistaken, or two thousand and one. One of those years, they start the Robina uh, Don Alejandro. I have one of the oldest boxes, but it's. Amazing cigar. Yeah, it is. It's one of the best. I love that cigar. Back to EMS. <laughs> there was a, oh, we've got a question. We've got, we've got a Gaz and a Gav in the chat. So Hi, Gaz and Gav. If I, if I mix you up, then it's your fault for having similar names. <laughs> um, Gaz uh, asked earlier whether you think the EMS mark adds to the already high price we pay here in the UK. No. The, no. the EMS uh, standard is, is basically the stamps and stuff they are implemented by Hunters and Franco, which is a distributor. They importer, yeah. not a retailer. So if the retailers decide to put X amount of money on top on that to make their profit, that's Everyone. their decision. Yeah. But I believe, I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but I think all the retailers pay the same price for cigars in Hunters of Franco. No. Or maybe some get, because they get big amount, they pay slightly It's, it's dependent on supply. supply. So if, okay. you, if you're a bigger company, you can obviously afford to purchase a larger quantity, which is going to push your price down. Not by a significant amount, but it also depends on the relationship you have and how much you're purchasing. So bigger companies are going to have um, better, better um, pricing capabilities. Smaller companies, you know, they may not be able to. But what's happening is... There's been a little bit. There's been a little bit of a shift over the last few years where the smaller companies have been starting to uh, push the prices down a little bit, which is great for the market, but not by a significant amount. We're talking like a few pounds here and there, but it's still pushing that competition, and it's it is helping in, in some regard. But this, just adding the stamp, so the that an importer like any other importer, the EMS stamp itself doesn't add, doesn't create any extra price or anything like that, because if they in, if they push up the price it's going to cause the price to increase across the board for everyone. It's not just, you know, it's, they have a certain responsibility to kind of like keep the price within certain range. So they're not going to um, unnecessarily inflate the price just for the sake of it. They might, they might push you a little bit and then just blame you on taxes because it's not exactly clear what price they get it in for, what price, you know, what kind of import charges and whatever they pay and so on and so forth. So there, there, isn't, there isn't a lot of transparency in that regard. I don't think we're ever gonna get any transparency, so there's not much point in discussing that. But 
it's not the price isn't going up because of the EMS stamp. The price is probably going up because they want to cover some margins. That's pr pretty much it, as as with any importer really. Uh, but the but the EMS, <clears throat> the the concept of EMS. Essentially, we're going to talk about that guy in a minute. The concept of EMS is simply the fact that they've received cigars, the import taxes have been paid, all appropriate taxes have been paid, duties and whatever, and they've uh, they've done the inspection. So when cigars come from Cuba, they will go to hunters, but they won't go. They, all of the if a certain batch comes in, all of them are not immediately inspected. All of them are not. Um, the the taxes and duties are not paid on all of them immediately. What happens is they go into a holding warehouse. In that holding warehouse, they leave it there until the demand is there or if a particular supply is running low and then they'll take supply from that holding warehouse, they'll perform their inspections, they'll put the stamp on and so on and so forth and then, you know, they'll cut open the box, make sure the cigars are all okay and then put it into circulation. And this is one of the reasons why you can buy a box of cigars where the EMS stamp says, 2018 or 2019 but the box date on the cigar will be something like 2014 and I've got a box of Monte Cristos upstairs which well it's an empty box now but I've got a box of empty, empty Monte Cristos upstairs where it's like that EMS stamp is 2018 but the box date is 2014 because they obviously received it and kept it within their uh, holding warehouse until it was required and they hold them in a, in a free port warehouse don't they so they don't have to actually yeah. technically yeah, they haven't technically imported into the country, although it is within the country and it's within reach if they need to put it into circulation. So that's how they operate. In terms of like, um, to, to EMS's credit, I know we've been saying like, oh, these rumors and all that. There, is, there are certain things that they do which may not necessarily be things that every importer does. I'm not saying that importers don't do this or no other importers do this because I don't know, but there are certain things that Hunters of Franco do uh, for example, they will vet all their suppliers, oh, sorry, all their all their retailers. So they will have certain parameters that every retailer must follow. They'll have certain humidification levels, which is you know what you'd expect, right? So they will have, <clears throat> they will always vet every single retailer as to the best of their ability. In theory, in practice, I don't know how um, uh, how, how that's done consistently and how you know that how how effective that is but this is the information that I've been given. They also make sure that they inspect or send people around to inspect particular retailers uh, every so often just to make sure that they're adhering to the set parameters and make sure that they're not uh, doing anything which is gonna reduce or remove um, or affect the quality that the end user is gonna receive. So they do have a more hands-on approach. They don't just say, here are the cigars, take them, sell them, do whatever. They have an active role in the retail side of things as well. And if a, if a retailer isn't adhering to the rules, then there are obviously gonna be certain consequences. So that's essentially what Hunters and Franco do. There are certain other things as well, but predominantly when it comes to cigars, they don't have access to any special quality or any special cigars. That's just logistically not possible. It's not feasible to think that they would have that. They also don't have like some magical cigars that turn up and they're like, wow, these are so much better. In fact, <clears throat> so, um, one of the things I, I, uh, I did discuss with a few people was that, and I noticed this as well, and this is completely anecdotal, but when I was smoking cigars bought from this country versus cigars bought from somewhere else, I did find that cigars that I was smoking in this from this country were tasting better. But there is a reason for that. And that is because when you're importing cigars from a different country, there's a big shift in terms of when it's in transport, it's going to go through a lot of um, environmental changes. Yeah, I know if you buy a cigars from Spain, they're slightly more dry there because of the conditions. Even if they're in a humidor, still the, the dry the weather it's in a lot Spain is easier. drier. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe you need to keep them for years in your humidor to become the same, same, uh, humidity same it takes a while but also you don't know how they've been aged and you know how how they've been stored in uh, some of the shops yeah most of the shops have legit humidors and uh, uh, they keep them well and stuff but you you don't know you know it's the ems guarantee that the cigars are legit not the, and they're going to be stored in a particular way they're based be, on their parameters have the check when they arrived here. yes yes but 
Yeah, that's not separate them, of course, from the no. big batch down in Cuba when they've been produced. It, precisely. It's got nothing to do with how Cuba are producing the cigars, because Cuba is going to produce a certain batch of cigars, send them out, and then uh, send them to the appropriate, appropriate importers. But they're not going to have like, OK, these are really good cigars. These are great. We're going to send them to England. There you go, hunters. These are a bit shit. Let's send them to SMS. It doesn't work like that. It just doesn't work like that. It's just not a logistical uh, thing that they can do. How would you, right? How would you even... Because the, the amount of sorting that would be required to say, okay, these are all great cigars, these are all bad cigars, these are plugged, these are... It's not something that's feasible from a reasonable standpoint. I think so, we have uh, one more question over there. You got a question? Alex was preparing to ask another question, I think. Oh, no. Alex no, is like, no. 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 <laughs> okay. Alex will put his hand up if he does. No, all right. Um, it, well, we are 50 minutes in already. Yeah, or it's going all off. I did, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just dropped my ash. Um, but yeah, um, no, this video's been uh, this video's been sponsored by Monte Fortuna. Um, as I said, as I said earlier in the video, uh, Monte Fortuna cigars—they're a great company. Um, they've uh, been kind enough to support this video and I really appreciate that, honestly. They, they, it's, it's fantastic working with them. I've worked with them on, an, on a number of occasions. If you watch some of my other videos, then you'll notice that I've worked with them in the past as well. And I, I buy cigars from them. I genuinely do buy cigars from them. It's not just like a, an empty, rec it's not just an empty recommendation. I really do buy cigars from them. Prices are great. They ship them relatively quickly and the cigars are great. They, like I said, EMS has absolutely no impact on the quality, it's predominantly based down to a lot of other factors, which I'm going to be discussing in a moment. But Monte Fortuna, you know, highly recommend them. We'll leave a link below to their website. Uh, make sure you check out their their site. And uh, yeah, Monte Fortuna, thank you very much for the, you guys. Appreciate it. Back to the video, Ray. Do you want to quickly mention what cigar you're smoking? Because I'm a bit annoyed. I'm a bit. I'm smoking a Cohiba. Oh yeah, just the Cohiba. All no. The way out. Let's show them, show no, them. I don't want to show up. No, come on. I'm going to show up to the people. I, like, I yeah. don't like the showing up. Yeah, jammy. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm smoking Cohiba, which say limited edition. Which Italian, one? 2011. Show the people. The Tell them which cigar it is. The people want to see. All it. He doesn't really want to show it to you. <laughs> it's a 1966. Even the, the match stick. The match is from 19, 1966 as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm what gonna try I'm gonna try to light it without even you know using the proper technique to light. Oh, you got you got to do it before you cut it though. That's the proper no, technique. No, no, that's, that's the uh, cigar aficionado technique. You watched that video, right? The three match one. I'm gonna use probably three as well. How much is that cigar again? Six and something inch. No, no, no. Price wise, I have no idea. Oh, you don't know? No. You were telling me a minute ago. Uh, you tell me, I didn't know. <laughs> Last week you were like, guess what cigar I'm gonna bring? I'm like, which one? <laughs> Damn. But you did have a couple of things to say about it compared to the Bahike. The, yeah, the Bahike is better. Significantly? Yeah. Really? Since we've reached a bit of a break, we have a bit of a, a slightly uh, tangential question from Penelope Arthur. Um, just make a mention because he's not really lighting a cigar. Okay. Uh, Hello. What was the first cigar you smoked? Uh, which cigar would you recommend for someone who's considering purchasing one for the first time? Epicure number two. That's the one I'd recommend to you. Um, I know who this person is, by the way. Um, Epicure number two. That's the that's the cigar I would highly, highly recommend. First cigar I ever smoked was the uh, Bahika 52. That was the first ever cigar I ever smoked. It wasn't my choice. I'm very thankful for it. But that was the first ever cigar that I smoked. And as soon as I smoked it, I was completely hooked on cigars. It was an incredible smoke. I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe how good it was. Um, at the time, I had no idea what it was. My uncle just had it on the table and he was like, you can pick one cigar. And I was like, which one can I have? He said, you can have the 52, you can't have the 54. At the time, I didn't know what it was, but now I know. He had the Bahika 54 and he gave me the Bahika 52. And uh, obviously, if anyone knows about that cigar, you know that uh, 
relatively pricey cigar. I think it's like 130 pounds at the moment each. So yeah, I was uh, spoiled. So if my uncle's watching this, which I highly doubt, he's not going to be watching this. He's too busy for that nonsense. Um, thank you very much, I uncle. Have, I don't have a sponsor plug for him. <laughs> 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 Gotta call him up later. I'll be like, I'll mention you in the video. What Romeo, no, Romeo and Juliet, a short Churchill. That was your first yes. cigar. That was your first ever cigar. We got it from Liverpool. Very easy to smoke that one. Yeah, very so easy. So the cigar is fully lit. I haven't used any, any, I didn't put it in my mouth. Man, stop jerking the cigar and smoke it, will you? <laughs> You're lying it for yourself, man. I know. You could blow on your own cigar. What do you think? First draw. The first property is coming after the one third of the inch, or let's say first three draws. The first property is coming after that. So ask me in two minutes. No, no, I've asked you now. What do you think of it straight away? First draw. Well, it's the virgin have, draw. It's almost last one from the box, so you know <laughs> them very well. It's almost last one from the box. I like how he's taking the band off, like he's trying to hide, even though I've told everyone what the guy it is. The, the band is loose. Way. You know when the cigars aged, sometimes they become slightly thinner yeah. and the bands become loose. I have on the both cigars the loose bands, so... Okay. Can I keep the bands and just show off about it? No. <laughs> no, you're going to put them in the cigars, I know. Was <laughs> my market selection. Yeah. U UMS. <laughs> I'd love to have that. I like the sound of that. <laughs> What so do you think? I don't know. As you can see. I thought it was the to give me it. I was like, can no. You hold can you it all the way out? Be able to see it. Spit down a bit. Oh, in front of your face. See the wrapper. How is how tooty is that? There we go. Oh no, back a bit. Back a bit. Oh, yeah, yeah that'll do. <laughs> I can't control the cameras, by the way. They're too far away. So Canon likes to. So we've got a Sony camera over here, which is pointed at me. Which if I put my hand there, it'll focus on my hand. And then I move back down, he'll focus on me. But the Canon, the Canon only wants to focus on Ray's face because I programmed it to focus on Ray's face just in case he moves around. But um, yeah, it's not going to focus on the so closest thing. I might talk about uh, my first cigars and uh, what I recommend to new people. You know, about recommendation, it all depends where you are, what's in the mood, if you're in a bar, if you're outside alone, what you're gonna pair with the cigar, you know. I usually the good the, the good first experience is supposed to be with the decent pair, in my opinion. So you can it's it's not need to be alcoholic. It could be you know non-alcoholic beverage, tea, coffee, stuff like that. And then depend of definitely don't go for a strong cigar because you you might struggle with the nicotine hit. Don't go for a big vitola. That's my opinion as well. Go for Corona or Robusto. Robusto, easy. Uh, or Corona, you know, the most tasty Divitolo is the Corona, basically. The whole the cigars and blend are made for Corona. Corona is not Robusto size, the, isn't it? No, it's a thinner. It's 44, 40... No, that's 40, a petite Corona. No, no, no. It, corona is uh, thinner than Robusto and... Uh, are, you are we talking Cuba? At all. Corona really? Vitola. Yeah, Corona Vitola is more engaged than Robusto. And that's how most of the blenders, when they blend the cigars, they, they roll Vito uh, Corona Vitola. Because when you go into, like, the, the, Cuban, the Cuban selection... You've got the Petit Corona, which is um, 42 ring gauge, and then you've got the uh, Royal Corona, which is 50 ring gauge. No. So I don't know well, if that's like... Cuba have... They've got weird, yeah. There's a main Vitoros, and then every every factory make the slight difference, you know, like yeah, yeah. if you go for Toro, Toro usually is 52, Yeah. but I've seen Toro 54 and 56. I've seen a Toro which is 60. 60 is Gordo, usually. Toro they, Gordo they call is 58. The, they they call it a Toro. Yeah. So it's every factory make their own slot, but Corona, it's the most tasty, taste-wise, most good cigar, you know, especially the rollers when they, the blenders, when they make the cigars, they make them, they try them, they test them on the Corona size. Mm. That's why the Corona is supposed to be the most tasty, but for the new smoker, go for Corona, go for, a, if you go for the Cuban cigars, uh, Epi2 is a decent choice, Usman mentioned, uh, Polo Ranaga, uh, Monte Carlo, so not bad cigar for a beginner. It's a long, thin cigar. Mm. If you go for non-Cubans, go for the lighter color cigars because the darker sometimes are stronger. Not all of them, not necessary, but the darker darker color is usually, you know, uh, San Andreas wrapper or Brazilian Arpiaca, which are sweet but very strong mm. uh, cigars. 
Uh, my first cigar, I can't remember my first cigar, funny enough. It's too long ago. Uh, it was, uh, no, I haven't been in the cigars uh, back then, you know, I've just been in a lot of events and parties. People just always have a sponsor there. They have a boxes of Cuban cigars. I guess will be my first hundred cigars will be something on the top range Cuban cigars before Bejique, because I start smoke way before the Bejique. Something which been top cigar in 2007, 8. I can't remember what Cubans been producing limited edition. You know what was the top cigar back then? Two thousand eight. Cuba, probably some uh, limited edition. I know Punch makes Swiss edition there. Uh, Two thousand eight. D five have limited editions uh, back then. Limited editions. Uh, Pyramides, I believe, start the first pyramid. Cohiba start, Pyramids two thousand eight, wasn't it? I think they start around that time. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure. In the uh, Pyramids Extra? Yes. yes 2008. They started as a limited edition. They did. In the year, so did. it must be some of those cigars. Um, my, then probably a few years later, I start uh, smoke with the Bejiques. I, of course, I'm, I did not have the budget for the Bejique, but all the <coughs> parties and events, the people just been there, the box has been on the table. I want just to be. Put them in your pocket, man. I have, in some moment, I have Did a you? small <laughs> humidor with behiques. I don't have any humidifications. You know, I just box of cigars from the events. People yeah. don't want them. I just He's get got them. a little cardboard box from Amazon and put the cigars <laughs> in. <laughs> Probably, yeah. I, I want to believe that I smoke some of the first release behique, but I doubt <coughs> because the first release behique is very, very collectible. Mm. It's been numbered cigar. If you don't know, the first brand of the behique is very different. It's not the, what the behique look like that now. Uh, every cigar have number. So every cigar being numbered on the band, not on the box. On the box you have... On the Bejique? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Very what first band of Bejique have uh, number. And oh, the uh, very first. Okay, no, they ignore that. Ignore that. Alex is fine. I thought you meant like every Bejique now. And I was like... Really? No, no. Very first band. Mm -hmm. I want to believe that I smoke some of them. If I know, that would be shame because I have nothing... I don't know nothing about cigars back then. So that would be shame to smoke that kind of collectible cigars. 2010 know, one. Yeah. And then don't know nothing about them. Did they make uh, did they make just the Bejique 52 at that point or was there were there I think size? they start with the Bejique 52 yeah. yeah that was that's the old school classic one isn't I it I don't think they've been called Bejique 52 they've been called just Bejique back in the time Yeah it was only called Bejique I have seen uh They now retroactively called Bejique 52 Yeah I have seen uh you know the box stickers which are inside on the lids You know when you open box of Cohiba Inside on the lid, we have the box, uh, the stamp with the head, with the... Uh, and then the Cohiba logo, yeah, yeah. Yes, I've seen Bejique like that. I've really? seen Bejique, I've never seen them uh, on a full box. I've seen them on an empty box. And the box, again, when you open the, the lid, there's a Bejique stamp. So... Interesting. Yeah, I, I can't, I can't, I'll say I didn't see that on a full. I've seen it on empty boxes. I don't know, is it being legit or someone just make them? But they look decent, you know, all the heads and stuff being... How supposed to be? Yeah, yeah. Instead of Cohiba, it's written Behiki on the bottom. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, we've got a question. Well, a question from me. Oh. Just because uh, you're talking about your first cigars, and we were trying to talk about EMS um, cigars. Yeah. I wonder, does the uh, did the EMS you know logo or, or did, did the fact that it was EMS influence you at all when you bought your first cigars? I had no idea. No, I never been influenced by by EMS stuff. I t in fact, I don't think I have EMS box at the moment in my humidor. No, because you'd have to buy from retail in the UK. Yeah, I buy some boxes from the retail before. Probably I finish them and I bin the box. At no. the moment, I don't have. I never been. Do you bin the boxes? I feel a bit like well, I give sentimental. Them to all, I give them to all people if they want them. I don't mm. need all the boxes. I collect. I I keep some of the boxes which are fancy looking, but most of the. The Cubans, which you know, are in production in the last 10 15 years, they're not nice looking boxes. I don't mind some old boxes, they're fancy lithography on them and pictures. The new ones, eh, it's not unless it's like something like Ramon Iones, the last box to release, you know, the, um, the green box, green box. Ooh, that nice was nice looking box, yes. I but, like the Monte Cristo Supremos box, yeah. The but that's one. some of the very recent releases, you mm. know, they start that kind of marketing again with the colors and different shape of boxes and, and everything and uh, um, yeah I never been influenced by EMS by by me and I'm I'm not some of my cigars I'm, I'm as you know I'm not born in UK I can buy cheap Cuban cigars from the country I'm born and they're way cheaper they, they don't have EMS on them so no cost though yeah so, so I, you wouldn't I, have had you wouldn't have had the perspective of oh I need to get EMS because you're brought up there <clears throat> or you live there I should say 
No, I, I personally haven't been... Makes no difference to me. I mean, if a cigar's a cigar, I'll smoke it. I'm quite happy to smoke EMS cigars. I'm quite happy to smoke non-EMS cigars. It makes very little difference. The only thing that I will do is whenever I buy cigars, I will, I will store them the way that I found I like my cigars. And that's something that takes a, a while to kind of figure out where you have like a certain temperature or a certain humidity that you want to kind of adhere to as much as you possibly can. It's the personal preference. Yeah, yeah. Everyone likes the cigars in different ways, especially if you smoke for a longer time. Mm. You've tried different humidity, different temperatures. Some people like humidified cigars. Yeah. Some people like drier cigars. Temperature. Usually in UK, the temperature is not the biggest factor because we don't have that hot five months of the year, like yeah. 40 degrees. We don't have also minus 20 degrees three months of the year. Yeah. So we have one temperature, like let's say seven, eight months of the year, we have 15, 17 degrees. So it's relatively easy to keep the temperature stable. Yes, yes. And this is another thing. So going back to EMS cigars and where when people say, well, I bought cigars from the UK, I bought cigars from abroad, and you know the UK cigars tasted better. Well, you have to consider the environmental factors. And that's, that's the main... Um, that's the um, the main difference between EMS cigars if you're living in the country versus non-EMS cigars. If you live in the UK and you buy an EMS cigar or you buy a European cigar or some a cigar from somewhere else, then that's the major that's the major factor. That's the major that's the differentiating factor. The environmental changes because in the UK we have relatively high humidity anyway, right? So the humidity in this country is somewhere around. 70% in general ish and the temperatures are relatively consistent it's not that hot it's not that cold room temperature is around 20 ish degrees celsius anyway so managing and sustaining cigars around that level is relatively easy but when you go to like a hot country that's when things get different <clears throat> so if you buy cigars from a hot country you have to factor in the environmental impact on those cigars one the environmental impact whilst they were stored in the country and then two, the environmental impact on the transport period. So the time that it takes to transport and for it to arrive in, the, in, your, in, 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 in England, and then also how long you rested those cigars. All of those factors make far more of a difference and far more of a logical difference than to say that, oh, Cuban cigars are better because EMS, they, they've got an EMS stamp on. That's complete nonsense. On, on theory, yes. But on practice, I... I I don't smoke so many same cigar mm. to can tell you that if I smoke let's say Monte Four, mm. if I smoke I haven't I need to smoke like five hundred Monte Fours and then I can tell you oh that Monte Four it's not from UK maybe it's from Spain because it's been a little bit dry already some oil's been gone or something like that it's I don't know, you need to be really, really big specialist to find the difference when you smoke. I don't know, a lot of people smoke the same cigar. Mm. Yeah, maybe they, they can tell that. But I, I smoke, smoke, a, very I smoke a lot of the same. very big variety of cigars. And for me, it's really <coughs> hard to tell you that. Uh, yeah, I can guess the profile. You know, it's a Cuban profile, typical Corojo, Corojo, stuff like that. Or I, it's a New World Connecticut with some uh, Sumatra leaves and, you know, bitterness and stuff. I can guess that. But to tell you that is that cigar is uh, EMS or not, I can't do that. Mm. Maybe someone will smoke in only the same cigar you for can't the last tell. 10 years. No, no, that's, that's the point. You can't tell. If you store them correctly, if you buy cigars from abroad, and if you buy cigars from the UK, and you store them the same, and you give them enough time to acclimate correctly, and you've stored them correctly, you will not be able to tell which one is from where. Because they're all from one place, Cuba. They're from one place in Cuba, but... Some of the cigars, let's say you buy from hot countries, hmm. if they're not no, I mean, being stored right, if they're not being stored the correctly oils, at so, that point, you yes. know, you know the the taste in the cigar is the essential oils. Yes. If some of those are gone, you can't bring them back. No. Doesn't matter how bad humidity you have, even if you keep them into the uh, proper humidity for five years, it's, it's very if difficult. If the to oils possible, are gone, yeah. they're gone forever. They're never gonna come back. Yes. That's why some people there's a. Uh, a lot of people which buy cigars which been bone dry from an auctions, from an altar, people which, you know, from uh, some old estates uh, or found them on somewhere, carbots even or stuff like that. Mm. You might, you might rehumidify them. That's not a hard process. I can explain it some in some shows if people want to know how to rehumidify mm. cigars. But the problem is with the taste after that. 
So if the oils are gone, there's no chance there's bringing no much back. you can do about it. You yeah. have a nice humidified cigar, probably without any decent aroma. You smoke pure tobacco, which have not much of a taste. Yeah. You won't find anything like uh, nice uh, cedars notes, uh, nice uh, uh, caramel hints or, or some leatherish or earthy profile or uh, tea or all the specific aromas which you have in the leaves. You're not going to find the, it. But that's the point that I'm making. It's got nothing to do with the fact it's EMS. It's about the storage and the environmental impact. That's basically it. That's the difference that you may notice between some cigars. But then if you don't live in England, let's say you live in, um, in China, because a lot of, based on some of the information I've been given from retailers over here, there's a huge market of customers in China that will purchase EMS cigars. Specifically EMS cigars. I don't know if there's like it's if this is because they have this perception that EMS cigars are better Or it's just the fact that EMS gives that extra safety net when it comes to authenticity because that is a factor EMS does pre uh, offer a certain an extra layer of security to prevent it from being fakes or prevent you from buying fakes So maybe that's what it is, but if you're buying from there, then They've been stored correctly at that or original point, but then through the transport it could be affected. That, that's why I asked the question in the first place. I mm. wondered if there was a level of reassurance that somebody might get by it, having that <clears throat> stamp, so to say. Yeah, that is. Yeah, U Usman say if they are stamped, they've been checked, quality checked when they arrive here. So the hunters in Franco people will open the boxes, will inspect the cigars if they have any mold, beetles. Uh, any other stuff like green, I am guessing on the premium stuff like limited editions, they check the colors as well. They've been checked in the factory, mm. but obviously Hunters and Franco have another step of uh, quality control. They're yeah. going to check about the green spots, uh, anything which doesn't be, doesn't supposed to be there. Yeah. They'll check them and probably they have the way to return some of the cigars back to Cuba and uh, replace them. No return, they probably replace them or something like that. Mm. It's, uh, yeah, you, you guarantee that the cigars will be checked, quality checked before you buy them. So there's an extra layer of security when it comes to preventing people from but buying fakes I'm, I'm guessing, and also quality control. I'm guessing most of the bigger retailers in Europe do that one as well. I would assume so. so. There's, there's a decent, decent uh, retailers which also don't sell steel box and they open the boxes, they check the quality. Most of the good big names. No, a lot, of, a lot of the retailers in Europe don't open the boxes. Not all. Not a, all. Good, a good number. A good number. I mean, you can request that they... So what they have is they have the option to... Um, uh, open the, so open when you when you inspect, check out yeah, yeah. They, they will ask you do you want us to open the box and inspect it or do you want us to just send it as it is and in my view I think it's generally better to have it inspected because it just prevents any issues the last thing you want is you, you spend all that time waiting for something to arrive in the post and then you get it and it's a dud it's just a waste of time so that extra step of just say listen can you just open and it's free right most retailers offer that as, uh, as, as a free service. They're just going to crack it open, check that the cigars are fine, and then bang, send them off. I think one of the reasons why some people don't like doing that is because on occasions, some retailers, not all, and it's rare, I find, but on occasions, some retailers, when the crack box is open, they don't do, they don't have that, they don't, I don't know, maybe they just don't do it in a careful way. So you know the barcode of the cigar, the authenticity barcode, where you could put that tends to get scraped off or they just that gets removed or whatever you you mentioned china yeah i as far as i know in china have a lot of fakes do they yeah dimitris uh might, something not gonna even try and pronounce it or something like that something like that yeah <laughs> hi dimitris uh he was just pointing that out as well. yeah it's uh china is a big market uh, it's a huge market especially recent a lot of uh, rich it's people a huge a lot of huge market. A lot of smokers and there's a definitely there is a lot of fake boxes going there. Yeah, maybe not on the legit retailers, but still a lot of uh, because there is there is a, some decent retailers there. I think uh, one of the biggest distributors is a French guy. If I remember his name, I might tell him it. Uh, he's been in uh, Habanos world for more than 25, 30 years. Hmm. But not not everyone uh, basically can buy from a, you know, China is a big country. Yeah. I don't think they have a stop shop in every decent city. So no, maybe they have shops in the biggest. It's a, it's, it's a huge, huge yeah. country, yeah. And uh, there will be plenty of fakes, 100%. And as a big demand, Chinese people, just the decent collectors, they just want to buy 
guarantee that would be legit and the only guarantee probably in the one of the i, I won't say one of the, the only one in the world but let's say one of the guarantees is that one EMS, of the most recognizable yeah well yeah. is that ems stamp basically yeah. guarantee that's a legit cigars because in england it's pretty difficult to buy fake cigars from retailers well well it's not possible at all from retailers i've never seen fake exactly I've, I've heard rumors some small sales shops in london which is very small ones some um, some friends of mine buy cigars which are not legit from there but not if you, if you go to a reputable retailer it's almost yeah, it's basically not... it's impossible to buy a fake cigar in the uk if you go to any decent retailer and there are plenty of them when you, especially in, if you're in london if you're in london and you can't find a cigar retailer you haven't looked enough yeah, yeah. they just they, they, i mean there's a few streets with a few, basically right? yeah even if every hotel in London we have a small humidor Basically. where you can go and buy. Well, it would be very expensive to oh, buy from hotels. Oh my God. But if you're desperate, if you have the money, go in every reputable hot, five-star hotel. They mm. will have a humidor in the bar. Precisely, yeah. There are plenty of available options to buy cigars, which have all been either sourced from a very reputable retailer. So there's one retailer in London which manages a lot of the supply from the hotels in the area. And uh, if it's not that retailer it's going to be hunters so it's very very difficult to buy if it's practically can you buy impossible your cigars from hunters directly mm -hmm. can you buy cigars from no if you're a, if you're a retailer you if can buy retailer. from yeah but if you're a normal uh, consumer you can't buy from i don't think yeah. you can i don't think you can because um yeah no, everyone will can. buy from them <laughs> it will be cheap <laughs> yeah 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 it would just be, yeah it'd be less expensive but then it would be a, it would be infringing on the agreements that they have with uh, the retailers because that's the whole idea right you're the importer you're not the, you're not the retailer you sell yeah. to us so we can sell it to that's the whole idea behind it but this idea that <clears throat> ems cigars i mean hunters of franco themselves have confirmed it's not even like oh we think this or we think that this is directly from hunters and franco they've confirmed no there's absolutely no difference in terms of quality from Cuba. It's everyone basically gets about the, the same kind, or they there's no selection specific to the EM to uh, to the UK to say oh these are for the UK and because they're X Y and Z. It's it's complete nonsense, and yeah, frankly, it's it sounds a bit stupid when you really think about it. Maybe it's because. People spend a lot more here, so they want to think like, oh yeah, these are better because we spent a lot. It's, I don't know. It's just complete nonsense. It's is, not... is it just us English people thinking we're superior? It might be that. <laughs> it might be that, you know. It might be just the uh, typical British superiority complex. I don't have that. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is a... Any interesting question over there? No? Nice. No, I think, I think that, um, I think from a collector's perspective, I don't see why EMS cigars would be better. But then, as you mentioned, you've got those uh, the the stickers on there, which are different colors, and you know what? They do look good. They do look nice when you actually have them on the box. They don't. They're not obtrusive. They're not like those health warning stickers, which are just oh, horrible. <laughs> Every year they get worse, right? You must be happy that we don't have the blind, uh, you know, the oh, if they do that, no packaging. What We're is not that going to happen in England? So no, no, not going to happen. Oh, thank God! They did that in Ireland, didn't they? Uh, yeah, they did it in Ireland. They did it in Netherlands. They will start in Netherlands soon. They did it in Canada. They did it in Malaysia. Um, Takes away the fun. So wait, you don't even have the actual band on the cigar? No, really. So in, in it's different in every country. In Ireland, I believe they put the, another band over that one. Okay. But in uh, Malaysia, they remove the bands. They send them separate. So it, it, maybe some people know uh, Ministry of Cigars, uh, Ferdinand. Yeah. He's a good friend. Uh, Ferdinand basically showed me how he receives cigars. So he received a box of cigars or package or whatever. In the separate package, he received the bands. So the bands being removed, they send them separate from the producers. You know, he get the cigars directly from the uh, producers. You know, he reviews cigars, 
and uh, tell him what you're thinking and stuff. So he have the buns in a separate uh, oh, bag. Then he need to put the bun on the cigar. So that's basically a loophole that the retailers have found where they're just sending the bun separately. Yeah, I, I think in, it. in Netherlands as well, you need to remove the bun and put the... If you buy, if you guys uh, been in the shop where you can buy cigarettes, you see how they look now in UK. The cigarettes basically a plain packaging. Same I haven't looking. seen them. Cigarette boxes, a part of the health uh, warning uh, posters, uh, pictures, they look all the same, like uh, brown, green color, and just the name on the brand. So imagine that on a cigar, beautiful band cigar, like, uh, you know, that Cohiba or any cigar. You have just a small line here and telling you, you're smoking Cohiba Single Six or Cohiba Limited Edition 2011. That's it. Same color band. Imagine if you go in the shop and oh, all the cigars six. look like that. Also the boxes, some of the boxes are masterpieces, especially the new exactly, world cigars. Yeah. Boxes are masterpieces, a lot of money in, uh, I put it there to design them, to make them colorful and... Like and Gurkha for example, I catch in, yeah, they put all their money in the cigar box and not the cigars. <laughs> let's not rant again Gurkha. every video man i just gotta dig at them just no. once <laughs> let's say now Gurkha watches and they approach you and say i'll give you a, a box every cigar every show you you're smoking i'll give you a box of Gurkhas to smoke what are you gonna do i mean i sell them mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean that's money <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to do you can use them as a matchsticks <laughs> <laughs> that, that was harsh that was harsh that was way harsher than what I said okay <laughs> and you're telling yeah, me be nice no, it's, <laughs> a, it's a it's a it's a joke uh, you know there's a specific type of cigars I call them fire, fireworks yeah you lit and throw <laughs> it's a fire stick cigar you know fire firework cigar lit and throw you don't smoke no oh okay. you know how good it is to put one of those fires fireworks into the cigar and how it explodes i've seen i've made that a few times with the cuban cigars why are you gonna do it with the cuban for man because i hate jlp and guantanamera sorry people you like them but i hate them that's guantanamera? not the guantanamera and jlp the worst cigar ever no guantanamera are pretty bad no i I, don't, really I would bad. not smoke three cigars unless you know if someone make me a trick i would recognize Jose them Albiado, you don't like them no, I don't like GLP, I don't like Gurkha. Don't I, I don't, you know? No, I prefer smoke Gurkha than GLP. Any Gurkha than GLP. Really? Yeah. J GLP, Guantanamera and Stubbis. So That's the three cigars which I would not um, smoke. Guantanamera, they're like completely machine made, you know, pre-cut and whatever. And then just a bit. Oh. I smoke machine made pre-cut cigars now and often. Really? Yeah, German made 100 years ago, decent smokes. Better quality than half of the cigars. Yeah, but on the you're market. talking about hundred euro cigars, man. That's a very different kind of category. It still don't don't taste much, you know. It's still blunt taste is. They have their specific uh, mistiness and aroma in the in the taste. But it's uh yeah that brands. You know, I don't want people to be influenced by me or anything. But that's a brand which I smoke enough, and uh, I won't smoke them again. I I have a <laughs> my last birthday last year. Few of my good friends, they make a joke. So they send me a package with a cigar each and nice cards. You know, they pay a lot of money for custom made cards, you know, with uh, cigars on them. They sell me, you know, happy birthday, blah, 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 blah. And everyone was put cigar into the tube. I have church YouTube. I have a Cohiba a pyramid. Tube. I opened the tubes and inside was only JLPs and Guantanamera's. They make a joke with me, you know, I've got like 10, of the, 10 or 12 cigars, only Gurk, uh, only JLP and Guantanamo, because they know, they know me, they know my, my You know what, I'd, I'd speak, a, I, I would happily smoke um, uh, Jose El Pietro over a Gurkha. I, will, I would smoke, but the old ones, they're amazing. JLP, if you find the old ones with the old bands, yeah. they're amazing. But if you're going to smoke that uh, um, budget Cubans, go for Quintero. Quintero is one of the best ones. Kintero uh, are good. R Rafael, uh, what was the brand? Uh, no, they're, they're long filler. Are they long filler all? Yeah. Okay. I haven't smoked so many with small Vitolos, to be honest, but Kintero probably is the most decent one from that style of cigar. To be fair, I think the best budget cigars tend to be Vigueros and uh, Paul Larinaga. But the Vigueros are uh, not machine made. No, no, I'm talking best budget. Yeah, yeah. Not, Vigero, not... I love Vigueros. Especially yeah. if you find the old band as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Old band is amazing. I have five so the, pack the, of. The uh... Tapados and the uh, Mananitas. Mananitas are really good. Yeah. The Entertiempos is a bit, it's a bit harsher. You gotta like age that one. You gotta age the hell out of that one. Yeah, I don't smoke so many often Cubans now, so I prefer New World also at the moment. 
Mm. From time to time, it's good to smoke a Cuban. But what are you smoking again right now? I'm smoking a. What are you smoking? Cohiba. <laughs> All that hype when you're smoking a 1966 right now. It's not hype. I've seen a comment in the some guy tell that that Cohiba is way better than Behike. Not in my opinion. I've smoked. Uh, that is my sixth or seventh. So I have to. Uh, that's my eighth. Nine, seven. I give one to a friend. I've got. I've, I've smoked seven sixty six, and I smoke. So we're not friends, huh? I've smoked <laughs> probably. We'll we'll cut it in half, Alex. <laughs> at least, f at least fifty behikes, you maybe take more. The left half, I'll take the right half. <laughs> Down the middle. Behike fifty six, way better than that for me. Really? Yes. You know, I've I've had. Uh, Behike is more complex, more creamy, more. That sometimes have some, not that creaminess as they're looking from a decent Cuban cigar. You know what I mean? And also the Bihiki is more slow burner for me. That is more quicker. I don't know. It's a... It's, it's a burning similar... pretty slow, to be fair. Hmm? Right now, it's burning pretty slow right now. No, it's burning quick. The I started that cigar like probably half an hour ago and it's halfway. Mm. If I smoke that size of New World cigar, I'll smoke it for three hours. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I've, and... I've, <clears throat> I've only smoked one Bihiki 56 so far. I've smoked... Um, Smoke, I've actually smoked, a, you know, by now, I've smoked a bunch of 52s and 54s, you know. I haven't smoked many 54s. I've smoked a bunch, only one 56 Couple, so far. But 50, 54, 52 and 56, usually that's... I think 52 I don't have is many better. yet. I know I need to probably buy some in some point, but... Personally, I think the 52 is better. I, I, I just I just enjoy them more. Maybe the size is better for you. I, I mean, I like a good long smoke. I'll, yeah, I like long smokes, and that's why I probably don't smoke so many short smokes at the moment. You know, yeah. like half an hour smokes... I really don't smoke them at the moment. No, because I set time out for them. I make sure that I sit sit down and I've got set. Yeah. Or if I'm writing articles or whatever, I can sit back and just smoke a cigar and, and then continue with it. But, yeah, the 56, that took me a while to smoke. Um, I mean, it was good. You but honestly, I prefer the 52. Ash on the Cuban cigar, you see? You damage the ash. You don't want to fall it down. It's so... We get it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Ray is basically uh, fiddling with this cigar like oh look at the ash look how nice the ash is look how <laughs> well it's not gonna be very often I'm smoking a, 1966 a, a decent Cubans as I say well, right now what do you think of that cigar do you want mini it's nice mini, mini thought process I have a slight bitterness from somewhere I didn't rush it so much so I'm guessing some of the leaves is not perfectly there construction is perfect a lot of spots oily spots you can see the cigar has been proper aged you know i'm guessing it's a decent probably few years i don't know 1966 are they two years uh, aged before they've been or more i, I, I don't more. know i don't know much about that cigar. Well, most knows. of the limited editions are two years aged yeah. before they've been uh, rolled and stuff that might be more gun reserve it tend to be about five to seven right? yeah the reservas are different but that's not a reserve it's just a limited edition mm. uh but by now a, it's had more than 10 years age now at I'm least i'm guessing I, I don't remember the box uh the box will be 2000 and uh, probably 11 or 12 the cut so they they not release them 2011 they release them usually a year later to 2012 generally Probably. they announced them in 2000 maybe it's been rolled in tobacco is from 29 2010 i'm guessing been aged slightly then rolled in 2011 and put in the market 2012 maybe the box cut is 2011 but still there will be no market 2012 i'm yeah. guessing i can't remember the box so when the first release they have at least like three or four years minimum three or four years ish age on them before they go into the market well that is a cigar which i really don't know why they make them you know because 2011 when they officially you know announced and stuff maybe 2010 they released the vehicle in that time so why you make another masterpiece because that's one of the masterpieces despite the fact it's worth uh, 40 50 pound when they release them mm. were they 50 quid when they were first released? 52 pounds i think first when they released that sounds them. about right yeah, Behike, I'm not sure what was the first price of Behike when it's been released. Probably about the around, same. around the same. Probably around the same. Why they make them if you're going to make, uh, you know, first super cigar, if you call it like because that. Because the, the Behike was a smaller cigar, which cost about the same or maybe more. So they had that premium yeah, tier. This is just that one step below that. Because every year they want to come out with a certain number of limited editions, right? Yeah, they release it with the idea to have the 45-year anniversary of uh, Cohiba. 
you know, Kuba is made 1966, that's why the cigar is called 1966. And 2011 is 45 years anniversary after the cigar be the Cuba being made. So yeah, uh, they release it in one kind of uh, appreciation the brand or. But they tend to make um, limited editions for the anniversaries. They don't make masterpieces necessarily for the anniversaries, right? They haven't made a they haven't made a masterpiece in a while though. In all fairness, what's happened, Alex? Uh, Ray did an amateur mistake. What happened? Oh, Ray, come on, man. <laughs> I was going to do it without saying anything, but you had to... No, 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 we're going to make a big deal out of this now, Ray. <laughs> it's not on the... It's silent. It's... It's, it's, it's is now. <laughs> no, it's a silent. No, it is now. It was buzzing. It's ago. It was on a vibration. It's still the same thing. No. <laughs> it's... noise. <laughs> I didn't hear it. Ray, did you hear it? No. No? Audience, you guys didn't hear it either, did you? Of course not. You don't ask them. <laughs> They didn't hear me, man. It was fine. Wait, you did nothing wrong, man. I was just making a big deal out of stuff. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so no, they did make so they did make a couple of. They haven't made a masterpiece in a while, have they? They've just made behicas. 52, 54, 56. I guess they are. They could be classified as masterpiece, but they haven't made something. Well, masterpiece. Probably talisman is the last one. It wasn't that good. It's good. No, man. Not as behicas, but it's good. Yeah, okay, maybe I'm comparing it to Bahiki, that's why. Yeah. But I had, but I was under that impression because it's a hundred pound cigar in the UK. Monte 80 is a hundred pound. Monte 80? Yeah, no, think, yeah. it's 45 pounds when he came is out. It? Yeah. No, no, I mean now. Yeah, but that's now. That's because supply has gone down and, and demand is still up. I'm talking about when he was first out. The talismans were about 80 to 80, 90 pounds when they first came out. Okay. I haven't smoked so many of them. It's not my favorite cigar. I like the Vito. I like how it's look. You know that. I like the way look. it looks as well. Yeah. But I didn't think it was a great cigar. I smoked. Um, I had like a. I had the whole box of them. I ha I have a. I have heard the rumor the talisman be made because of them. So they're pretty much same looking cigars, with the you know pigtail on the top with the double band you know limited edition and because they can't produce. Well, they make it with Talisman, basically. They yeah. produced 2019 Talisman yeah. with the same band, 2017. They did it 2017 and But they, that was many years after that cigar being released, and they can't just produce another 2011 you know, cigar, no. limited edition 2011, like six years later or seven years later. They could later. do a Grand Reserve. Eh? So they, they, they probably, that's why they produce a Talisman. That's what they heard. I just say it's just a bunch of people talking. And so do you think like in, in about 10 years' time, they're going to be worth 250 each, similar to the 2011? Talismans? Mm -hmm. The original 2017 are very, very high expensive now. If you find the original 2017, they're, they're expensive. They're about 100 pounds in the UK. You can, can you find them in retail? Not 2019, 2017. No, 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 you could get both of them. Same price? No. <laughs> 2019 is about 100, uh, 2019 is about 95. 2017 is about 105. So, so not, not a major difference. Not 20 much, pounds, not much, yeah, 10 yeah. pounds, 10, 20 pounds. Yeah. Not a huge difference in price. Maybe in 10 years, depend what's coming on the market, depend well, how well, is the market. consider this though, in the last like two or three years, it's already gone up by 30%. Yeah, I'm not sure, what was the, what was the release before that talisman? Royal Robusto, 2014, the Cohiba one, mm. it's, no, it's not Royal Robusto. It's no, that was a grand reserve. It was a Robusto size. The Cohiba was, uh, that's a grand reserve. No, no, 2014, you have limited edition 2014. Oh, yeah, 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 that's a Robusto, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and standard Robusto size. Yeah, and it's uh, quite pricey at the moment as well. So that's eight years later. It's uh, probably close to 100. I'm, I'm not sure, but if you find it, they will be they're expensive. No, they're... Yeah. You'll be lucky. You'll be lucky if you find a 2014. I mean, I guess at the moment it's just collectors and um, uh, probably some uh, hunters, you know, they're probably just hidden. So another another big conversation we can talk about it in the future. Why Cohiba is more collectible than the others? You know, you have limited editions. I have in my box uh, 2012 C3 Partagas. It probably doesn't want more than 30 pounds. Really? Yeah, you have uh, all kind of limited editions, but the Cohiba limited editions are way more collectible and worth. Of course, because the brand is more rec recognizable than the Partagas. Probably because it's been created as a premium brand. Yeah, but that's the perception, isn't it? Yeah, even the, if you remember one of the sessions you make the when we make a session on the issue, I smoke a thirty-five, Cohiba thirty-five. Mm. That, that is a 
crazy price if you find any because they're made only for the humidors mm. they're not sell in the boxes and separate and stuff and if you find any Cohiba 30 Cohiba 35 they will be I can imagine yeah um, the last uh, I was gonna say the cigar that I really really want I don't know if you have I don't know I don't think because I, I asked you I don't think you, you you have them the Monte Cristo limited edition from 2012 I, I really want uh, I really want to try some of them I mean I tried one of them and I thought it was incredible Good, like it, it's very. I can't remember smoking. Very dense. Maybe I tried them at some point. Very dense flavor. It was it was quite a strong smoke when I tried it. But then I tried it when I was still relatively new to cigars. So my my uncle had them, and I had one of them, and I was like, holy shit, this is. I probably shouldn't swear. <laughs> Have I? Well, between you. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> the podcast of the show, uh, guys, it's from some island in the North Sea, so we're not eligible to any law and stuff. It's not the law, it's just, yeah. you know... We're quite a long way past the watershed now. I think we'll be all right with it. <laughs> no, I think it's... I think it's it, four shits and a fuck that we get. Though, is it? <laughs> who, said the, who said the F word? No, no, that's what we're allowed. Oh, is it? No more now. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just beep it in the uh, in the, that, in, be, in, be, in the audio. It'll be fine. It'll fine. Be we fine. haven't quite reached the BBC yet, so uh, <laughs> I think we'll be all right. Start start charging us uh, TV lights or something. The yeah, the Monty tw- two thousand and twelve. That cigar. I really want. I really want some of them. Um, I had a look at some of the retailers over here. It's so expensive though. They're like a hundred pounds each, and I was like, mm, I don't know if I can justify that. Bit of an expensive smoke. What do you think we can talk about next week? What time is it? How long have we been running? Uh, oh, one and a half yeah, hours. Plenty of time. We have plenty yeah, that's a good amount of time. Steve, Steve Cutler, who's been coming for quite a lot, actually. Hello, Steve. Um, just made an interesting point. Isn't it? Well, slightly related, I guess. Just about how Cohibas go through a third barrel fermentation. I mean, the, the, the process of cigar making and how that can affect um, cigars is, is sort of an interesting thing to me. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but also, I mean, what is the question? It wasn't a question, it was just a statement about how Cohibas can go through a third barrel fermentation. But um, there have been a few comments about, you know, uh, manufacture and, and also what you can do to your cigars afterwards. Third barrel fermentation, I'm guessing he, the guy mentioned, uh, wants to talk about the maduration process, the third maduration, which is uh, kind of a myth. Nobody know when the third maturation process will start into the cigars. You know, we got the first process starting a few years after the cigars made. The second starting approximately 10, 12, 15 years after the cigars been rolled. There is an idea for the third maturation process, which is uh, not uh, scientifically recorded anywhere. It must be probably after 25, 30 years which the cigars not going to be in the peak, supposed to be not, not in their peak and supposed to probably lose strength, power, taste, aroma. But it's a, it's a big, big uh, conversation. It's uh, something which we need. We can talk a lot about it. Probably in some of the future shows, we can talk more about the maturation process, uh, aging, um, uh, fermentation. <clears throat> Steve Cutler also said something which I wholeheartedly agree with and probably should go on a t-shirt. Friends <laughs> friends don't let friends smoke Gurkha cigars. <laughs> and that's that's something I can live by. Friends don't let friends smoke Gurkha cigars. <laughs> you know, the other day I found in Facebook group uh, which is called Gurkha... Gurkha Nation? Something, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And there was about 250 people there. Really? I know some of them. You know what? what? I'm saying a lot of crap about Gurkha, but if I, you know, if someone enjoys Gurkha cigars, let me just clarify. I don't have a problem with anyone smoking Gurkha cigars. I've I've got zero problem. If you smoke Gurkha cigars, if you enjoy them, by all means, carry on. That's how it's supposed to be. Exactly. And I I, I try Gurkha all the time. Same every new Gurkha. I I I mean, you smoke Gurkhas when you, yeah, I I don't have a problem with that. A few weeks ago, I I smoked awful cigar made by Gurkha, but I give it a try and I, you know, I didn't like it. I don't know it. why you're surprised that it was awful. You know, that was a dollar cigar. Oh. What you expect from a dollar sandwich make cigar. So it's a Ooh. sandwich, it's not a long filler, it's a sandwich, it's worth a dollar in US. I didn't expect it, but on a few days later I smoked another dollar cigar, which was amazing. For a dollar. 
I mean, if, if Gurkha are listening, they can't really complain because we've apparently just persuaded Gaz Stanfield to try a Gurkha now. So. Yeah. So, you know, we're promoting them. Yeah, I, I mentioned in the last any, show... Any, any publicity, right? <laughs> I mentioned on the last show that there is a Gurkha which I think they will be good. The I still Gurkha haven't tried them. They made in Aganosa Factory. I'm going to mention again. It's another commercial, free commercial. I'm going to... Gurkha San Miguel, Gurkha uh, Nicaragua. They made in Aganosa Factory. The guys which make a decent cigars. I will not try them. I have a few of them in my humidor. Maybe I'll smoke them in some point and I'll definitely mention that in the show what I'm thinking about them. Are they worth $10 price tag? Because they were their price tag $10 in US. Which is uh, slightly over the Gurkha most of the cigars. Most of the Gurkhas are probably around because they've got a lot of the ghost and shadow and all oh, that man, they have a lot of lines they have the reserve as well mm. seller reserve i smoke uh seller reserve 15. how much are the seller reserves in, in the us because over here they're 15 like about... 17 dollars really depend where you find them of course okay because in us every state has that's different pretty taxation. pricey for a, for a cigar in the us well the decent standard production anyway yeah yeah but you have a lot of brands which were like 15 dollars a lot of cigars worth 15 dollars and they're decent so in in US cheap cigars are up to five dollars probably, between five and twelve dollars I would say normal cigars normal more than twelve dollars it's a slightly expensive even for the US market. Yeah, more than twelve dollars that means something uh, very boutique, very limited edition. And then you've got thirty dollars so cigars the, which are like really. The cigar I smoke earlier, Ezra Zion, as I say, it's made in five hundred and fifty pieces. Mm. Uh, they retail, usually sell them on five packs or seventy dollars. Okay, which is a fourteen dollar a stick. Wow. And uh, they sold out for uh, 10 seconds usually, but they have 500 cigars only. Mm. So it's a well, 100 packs. It's not a lot. So it's not much, but yeah, the, the some of the boutique brands, they make 12, 13, 14 dollar cigars. Mm. And yeah, people buy them, collectors can, buy them. I can imagine, I can imagine. So, conclusion on EMS cigars. <clears throat> EMS, for me, never been a factor. And it won't be. Uh, if you if you want to be sure, maybe if you're a Cuban smoker, if you smoke predominantly Cuban cigars, if you don't touch New Worlds like Usman. Um, hey! <laughs> smoked the New World last week. I smoked the New World yesterday. <laughs> look at this channel. Look at the channel. It's Cuban cigars. <laughs> Let's break that stereotype. I'm going to smoke New World cigars. Hey, man. Every there, were, day. there were the. I did review on Davidoff, and there's another Davidoff coming up. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so EMS, if you are, are they worth the collectible, uh, as a collectible items? No. Potentially uh, for some people, but mm, not in general. No, that's a big, big uh, mm, non nonsense for me. Uh, are they worth the name as a quality? I would say slightly yes, because they've been checked. Not because they've been produced in different way from Cuba, they just because they've been checked in in the Hunters and Franco, where they, they've been supposed to have decent quality. And uh, uh, are they different? No. No. I mean, that's the, that's the crux of it. Cuban cigars uh, bought in Europe and Cuban cigars bought in the UK, they're basically the same. They're from the, they're from the same batch or same source, same everything. The, the only difference or the only potential difference, I should say, because it's not really a, a verified thing because we don't know how every single importer manages all of their cigars right so the potential difference is quality control as they come into the country or as they distribute to the uh, suppliers and potentially environmental factors because in the uk it's, it's pretty humid here anyway so it's easier to store cigars and maintain a certain level of humidity the temperature is relatively mild it's easier relatively easier to maintain a certain temperature as well so it's mostly those factors and hunters of franco do <clears throat> as i mentioned they play an active role with the retailers as well so that might have an impact we don't know how much of an impact that makes but potentially that could have a great impact or maybe a negligible impact in terms of the outcome or the result or how you know how the uh, cigars are so hunters do play a role it's not like they don't do anything um it's not like they've um yeah it's not like they don't do anything they obviously do a lot to maintain a certain level of quality because one of the things that Jimmy mentioned to me was that look we can't compete on price compared to Europe there's no way right we can't compete on price so we'll compete on quality so we will take 
an extra layer we will we will work uh, we will work harder to try and make sure that the quality that people receive or the end user receives is going to be up to a standard which they're going to be happy with but there's a caveat there and that is that that doesn't necessarily mean that retailers in Europe are doing anything less that doesn't necessarily mean that um, retailers around the world that have legitimate Cuban cigars are going to do anything less or, you know, have um, worse cigars because they don't care about them. That's just not the case. It's, you know, this is simply a point about EMS or Hunters of Franco that they do take extra care, but so could everyone else because that's not something which is unique to anyone, is it? It's not like only one person can take care of their cigars. Didn't you say that around the world, Steve just put up a little point, He's, he's keeping us going here, Steve. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> uh, he's just saying that in the US, EMS equals quality. EMS or AMS? EMS. And I don't know. It's Maybe the they buy them from here as well. It's, it's the perception, though. It's got, it's got nothing to do with actual uh, verifiable quality. It's just the perception. That's all it is. Yeah. In China, they have that as well, but that's more of a mark of authenticity. In the In the Middle East... They have something similar where people will actively purchase EMS cigars because there's a perception that they're better or there's, there's a perception that there is, there is a layer of security there. That's granted. That's, that's not something that can be denied because there is a layer of um, uh, uh, security to prevent fakes and so on. But the idea that they're better in quality, that's entirely perception. It's got nothing to do with the reality of it. Something I forgot to mention earlier, <coughs> it's an interesting point. Uh, the EMS stamps, stickers, are only on the boxes, wooden boxes. You won't find them on the tins. You won't find them on the smaller uh, special editions uh, boxes. They're not on the tins. They're not on five packs. Some Cubans come in on tins now. No, 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 no. They do come on five packs. Are they? They do. I've got I've five packs upstairs. Them. I've got a bunch of Monty and uh, 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 even a three packs. And they have the EMS? Yeah, they do. Officially, got, that's... They do. They've got the hologram as well from EMS. It's a smaller sticker. It's a different one. I asked about that and someone... F I need to double check my source. No, but they I've, say I've, they I've got them up put the stickers on the tins and stuff. No, I've, got, I've got them upstairs. I'm, yeah, yeah. I can show you. I believe you. Yeah. No, they definitely okay, do. Okay, so that's worth worth of worthless comment. <laughs> no, you, it's 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 um it's a process of learning for both of us as well, isn't it? So, no, there's nothing. There's not. You don't make a worthless comment by enemies, no. But yeah, they absolutely do put them on because when you go into cigar retailers and you see the uh, three boxes and the five boxes, they do have the EMS um, uh, sticker on them. So the because a lot of three and five boxes they don't have the age stamps on uh, on the outside do they they have you on the inside so you can't really tell how old they are but the ems stamp on the front does have the the uh, sticker on it with the uh, year but that's not an indication of what year the cigar was produced it's just like it's at least 2018 but it could be older so i've got um a box of three edmundos i've smoked them obviously but i've still got the box um, on the outside it says 2018 inside it says 2014 so, yeah, it's definitely something that they do. I don't know if they did that all the time, but I know that 2018 you, you they buy, did. You buy definitely more small boxes than me. <clears throat> I don't buy. I, I don't remember buying a tin recently. Cubans, you know, I've got Fuentes and Vigueros? stuff like that. I haven't buy Vigueros for many many years. The last Vigueros I bought was from with the old bands. I smoked them, but I didn't buy. You know, I have singles, but no boxes. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, I think Vigueros have the stamp, the sticker on them as well. I'm pretty confident. I could be wrong, though. Are they sticker uh, Guantanameras and stuff? Why would you? <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know. No, are they stick the know. budget ones? It's a good good question. I uh, just coming on my mind. Are they I stick the Quinteros, Guantanameras, JLPs? Don't think they stick them. I don't know. Why? It's a still, still Cuban cigar. Yeah, but as you mentioned, I'm never smoking the LP. It? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Some people like them. Mm. And they want to be sure that's a, a legit GLP. I don't know who's going to make fake GLPs on the other side. <laughs> uh, 
How would you even check that it's fake? You cut the open, it's short filler. <laughs> They're all short filler. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is a long filler JOP. It must be fake. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what are we going to talk about next week? Next week, oh, next week we've got an interesting one. We're going to be talking about aging cigars. So this is going to be a, a Ray heavy video. So I'm going to be feeding you questions. So we're going to be talking about aging cigars. We're going to be talking about collecting cigars. We're going to be discussing um, how to age cigars, the difference between Cuban and New World cigars, and how that <clears throat> how that plays into aging, um, what the differences are, and just going into more of the collector kind of discussion. Because I've had a number of questions from uh, various people asking me about these kinds of things, and I keep telling them we're gonna we're gonna do an episode, we're gonna do an episode. So finally getting round to it. I say finally. This is only our third week ish first week was a bit of a dud two and a half, two and a half. <clears throat> it's a, a two videos and a dud that's what i call it so you know next week we can we can discuss that in more detail and we can really do a subject a more in-depth look at aging cigars what happens the process and if there's a chance i don't know if you can do this because you did mention that you know you have to go through a lot of stuff but what are the chances that you could bring in a cigar that has plume on it Actual plume, because that would be really, really good to look at. I am. I am put gonna, it under macro gonna, lens line. Yeah, I think I can bring you some. I'll bring you a approximately hundred years old cigar to smoke. I'm gonna bring you a new world fifty years old cigar. Made Is it that massive where, one? Because that's gonna take. No, forever. no. I'm gonna bring you small vitos. You can try oh, them all. Okay, okay. And uh, if I dig some of the old Cubans, we'll see. We you smoke old Cuban on the day, the first show. You that know was... how they taste. Yeah, so they're again, amazing. I'm going to bring you Hoya de Nicaragua made in the 70s. Okay. And I'm going to bring you a German short filler cigar made early 20s and early 30s. Okay. So approximately eight years old cigar. And then you'll bring some cigars which have plume on them. I will we'll try put to it bring under the... plume, yeah. That would be really helpful. We can put that under the microscope and show people live what these cigars look like. It's not a real microscope. <laughs> I'm, figuratively speaking, we're putting it under the microscope. We're putting it under a macro lens, in that effectively. So we'll put it under the macro lens, and then we can um, actually see what what the structure looks like, and then see exactly what it's all about. Uh, so, yeah, we can maybe we may be um, about to see real plume, which is basically a cigar unicorn. People are still not gonna believe. No, so no. Uh... If we put it if we put it under uh, if we put it under macro lens, we can actually see the structure of the uh the substance so there's there's no way you can dispute that you know what i mean so if people if, if it is plume then it's plume you'll see the comments will blow up no i, I think people <laughs> i've been discussing that many many times but if we people. show it if we show the actual structure and it's a crystalline structure there's no way you can dispute that you can't call it micro you can't people call it still just still dispute it and say it's uh, basically it's uh, organic material still if it's a crystalline still some kind of uh, mode structure which become crystallized. People are still tell them that I've read that kind of comments. I'm not a uh, you know I'm not a scientist by any means, so I have no idea. None of us the, are. How the things become crystallized or moldy or spores or. But if it does become crystallized or if it does solidify, you you'd still be able to see the structure because if it solidifies, or if it, if it's become dry and it just kind of dried on top of it. And solidified on top of the actual cigar, you still be able to see the difference between a crystalline, a uh, crystalline uh, structure versus an organic structure. There's a distinct difference there. You you can't really, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that would be a really good thing to demonstrate. So if we can demonstrate real plume, that I think that would be pretty incredible. I'll try to find some examples and bring them. That would be amazing. We've had some uh, interesting suggestions for the future as well. Oh, yeah, please do. Feel free to suggest. Yeah, guys, before Alex mentioned the suggestion, feel free to mention someone from the industry you like. It's your idol or something. You want to see them in the show, of course, if he's alive. If you want to see them on the show, I might make... Uh, you Let's know, get Zeno all my best, What's he doing these days? All my, <laughs> all my best efforts to bring uh, people on the show, even virtually with us. You know, we're not able to travel now and stuff, but... I used to know a few people from the industry, so if you want to see someone, make us a suggestion. It will take a time. It's not going to happen over a week time. It will take time, 
but we can bring him for the show for let's say a short session of 10 15 20 minutes where you can ask directly question we can ask them and uh, you know who i you know who i want to call yeah, bring yeah. On. I'd, I'd love so, love to talk yeah with we, we have that as an idea probably in the future we'll have a small part of the show where we'll be a guest where we can fire up some questions mythical questions i like that idea with the mythical questions and ask the people story stories and stuff like that so aj fernandez dear nick perdomo in the off chance that you're watching this video please come on our video we would love to have you, you know as a guest. what's the what, what the building? <laughs> you know what will, be, what will be the problem with AJ Fernandez? It's a one big problem. The guy don't speak English. <laughs> Does so, he speak Bulgarian? So uh, I Those can, are the language we've got. I can, you know, it will be hard to arrange uh, Stephen Krom, I think is the guy, which is uh, basically his uh, work for him and I think he's based in UK. So he he's a, usually he's a <clears> translator <throat> on the Zoom sessions where AJ... Wait, I've got, I've got the perfect suggestion. Sorry for interrupting there. Let's get the CEO of Gurkha on. Juan, <laughs> yeah. No, do you know what? It's not impossible. Do you know what? Um, saying that, he seems like a cool guy. He seems like he's uh, um, taking the company potentially in a better direction. Stop so, talking about Gurkha. Let's stop. I, I just, it's just a good subject. But yeah, if guys, yeah, if you, so if you have a lot of suggestions for, for one person, I'll do all my best to bring them on the, on the chat. Marvin Shankin. He will not come. I can guarantee that. He never do that kind of session, Zooms, unless... We can, we can, we can I've seen him on two shows. One is the Fuente show, which basically we all know who is sort of, uh, you know, who is Carlito Fuente and uh, his... Uh, we could extend an invite out to him, though. He's not going to come. He might not, but we could extend an invite out to him and yeah. see what he says. <laughs> yeah, might burn that bridge as uh, Gaz. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if I have. I said a lot of good things about Cigar Aficionado in the video as well. I'm, a f I'm still a fan. I've got magazines right here. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, for the future, look, it was quite an interesting one from Ian Kelly. Uh, he, well, he, his actual suggestion was why uh, cigarettes and cigars are... Well, suggestion was why cigarettes and cigars are considered the same health risk and um, you know, how, how the social attitudes to smoking in public are, you know, differ or are the same. Not even well, close. Not well, even um, close. You know, I think that's an interesting discussion on, on perception of smoking in general and... and uh, you know how how the uh, yeah we can cover we, is changing. we we can cover that in a in a show you know the cigarette cigars and cigarettes and cigars are nothing same they're same family but that's it even the tobacco is different in both of them so very different and very as, as for the future as well Gaz was uh, mentioning how you know taxes can potentially impact the uh, future of cigar smoking as Tax, well taxes taxes yeah you know if say if taxes rise and it becomes more uh, expensive. We can we can guess in there, but there's a there's a topic which we can talk. Yeah, it's a it's a few things we can say there. It's uh, I think UK price wise in the nearest future will be better than what is now. I don't know if the price will be lower, but they will be better related to the European market. You know, if let's say now the UK price is a uh, twenty percent. I don't know what's the correct number. But if they they're twenty percent more expensive than the uh, the Europe. In the future, the new world cigars, especially, will be, if not the same, probably very close to the European prices. And then, lastly, everyone wants to test your palates with a blind taste test, but maybe that could be a, uh, maybe that could be a standalone video or something. Uh, test my palate. Oh, yeah, we, we can research it before. No, we, I'm going to end up embarrassing myself. <laughs> we, we're not. The I'll idea end is up not smoking to make, the gurkha, enjoying it. The, the idea is not to make uh, testing on this show, but I, I'm I'm doing a lot of. Uh, uh, blind tasting uh, for different stuff. Uh, I'm officially not yet part of the cigar tasting uh, panel of the Cigar Journal. I am working towards that one. I'm in the trial period at the moment. I am doing blind tasting for a few other organizations, which I'll mention probably latest on the shows, which when everything is more official. But yeah, I like blind tasting. It's a, it's a great, great way to taste your palates and start thinking. I might think about how you can uh develop your palate how you can describe the taste of sweet salty you know sour and stuff like that way easier than than what you read in the magazines literally practical sessions and yeah we can yeah, you do that you do a lot of that on instagram right do you uh, do a lot, a lot of that on instagram yeah sometimes on my life uh which is a chat based wild life in okay. instagram well, I do. why don't you you know that might be an idea. i mean because i think that you know we've got your instagram link in the description anyway 
So yeah, guys, you know, make sure you follow Ray on Instagram because he's Ray's doing a lot of stuff on uh, on there. Uh, a lot of live videos where yeah, I do every Friday half past seven. I've got live videos where you right can there. ask me some more uh, question which you want to know. I don't have any specific topics every week. I just smoke a cigar, chat with the people. I've got my regular guys which ask me a bunch of questions. Uh, usually, I try to reply to most of them if I know the answer, of course. But if you want, yeah, if you want more about how you want to taste and develop your palate, I can give you some clues on that. And the last plug for our sponsor today. <coughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> we should have a little jingle there or something, right? Uh, yeah, Monte Fortuna Cigars, they're, they're the sponsor for this video and uh, a fantastic company, highly reputable. I think people who buy cigars already know about Monte Fortuna Cigars and they're based out of Europe, they ship well, but they ship to the US as well and highly recommend them. I buy cigars from them, they've got a great selection, fantastic prices and the service is excellent. So. I'll leave a link below to their website. Make sure you check out Monte Fortuna. And uh, yeah, thank you again for supporting our channel. It really does, uh, it really does mean a lot and we really do appreciate it. So thank you, Monte Fortuna. Any other final questions? Any final thoughts or anything? Uh, I don't think so. No? Oh, we're well, bang what on. People, what people are saying about how European retailers are so much cheaper, but I think we've covered that one. Yes, <laughs> yep. Um, but yeah, we're pretty much bang on two hours. Amazing. We didn't go over today. <laughs> Yet. Yet. <laughs> this could carry on. I mean, my cigars are so, almost finished. Yeah, guys. Smoke your cigars. Don't put them as a picture on the wall. They're nice looking, some of them, but smoke them. Enjoy them. You don't know how much left here, so... On a, and we're ending on a depressing note. No depressing note. <laughs> we need to smoke our cigars because if you don't smoke your cigars, when you pass away, there's a small fishes coming like me. Which buy cigars from your widows. I mean, I'd say you can't take them with you, but if you get cremated... And... That's a great... <laughs> that with is a great idea. You know, if you get cremated, you could just take your cigars with you. You could smoke them all together. <laughs> Black humor. <laughs> <laughs> and on that depressing note, thank you guys for watching our video. Do the typical stuff, like and subscribe. I can't do it. <laughs> I, I mean, we've already had Gareth telling everyone to like it, so... Oh, yeah. thank you, guys. <laughs> Very kind of you. But yeah, subscribe to the channel and, uh, you know, your support obviously helps us. So we're going to try and continue doing this every single week. And uh, yeah, hopefully see you all next week where we can talk about aging cigars, collecting cigars, storing cigars in lots more depth. So see you guys next week. See you, guys. <laughs>